Welcome back to another Unclick podcast. This episode, we have Ryan Fudger once again, myself, Dennis, and Dakota Roche. Dak Roche. Dak Roche. We were talking about his last name. Everybody says it in different ways. Roche, Roche, it's pronounced, Roche. Yep, Roche. Roche. So Roche sounds tight. Roche, I don't like at all. <laughs> Roche is perfect. Hell yeah. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank Thanks you. so much for driving down. He's driving all the way down here and then driving straight back up. To go Bondo a door. To go Bondo a door. Yeah. That's, that's literally your life though, isn't it? Driving around Bondoing things? Yeah, kind of. I love fixing <laughs> spots. Doors, <laughs> spots, whatever it is. Yeah. But this is for the Colt Clubhouse, yeah. not a normal spot. Yeah. So yeah. What, what happened with that? Gosh, man. Ever since this COVID stuff started, like for whatever reason, the break-ins have been getting kind of crazy at Colt, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, like now we're good because there's bars on both sides of the windows, inside and out, cameras. Like there's no way you're getting in there now. But um, the last time I got broken into was like two weeks ago and uh, the door needs a little help. So I'm going to I'm going to go there and help. <laughs> stop breaking into the Colt warehouse. Yeah, people. stop it. There's I, there's no stock. No no BMX company has know, stock every, right now. Everybody's out stock, right? sold out. <laughs> Which is a great Stealing thing. the socks. Oh, dude, it's from, the best problem. Yeah, that's crazy. That's I don't, the thing I don't think anybody listening to this is the ones breaking into the clubhouse. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, not. it's so rad. Like, I mean, unfortunately, like, you know, you got to look at the silver liner things. And it's like the BMX industry is thriving right now and the bike industry in general, you know, because it's like, people haven't been driving as much and people have been home more. They're like going on bike rides. And it's like, you know, again, like I'm not saying that like, Oh, it's a good thing this is happening. But at the same time, you have to look at the positives of it, you know? Of course. Yeah. So I think and, everybody has that, even if they're, you know, for me, it's been super stressful a couple of months, but I had a bunch of time to hang out with my kid exactly. and, and it was awesome. Exactly. Like it was, it was something that I'll look of, look back on as being the weirdest year of our lives, but the, it did have some positive aspects, sure. of course. So, for sure. um, one of those things, I guess the the biggest thing is uh, yesterday or the other day you posted that you finished filming for Native Land 4. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. How long it's coming. did you film for that? Okay, so there's some footage in there. There's like two or three tricks from like a year and a half ago, but then I didn't film at all since then because I started working on um, my part in the fans video mm -hmm. and um, that kind of, and I was traveling a lot. last for year. For Shimmer? For Shimmer, so you, okay. yeah. And last year was the busiest travel year of my life, which is insane. You know what I mean? Like I, it wasn't even like really ramping up to be that, but then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, you're going here and here and here. And it's like between helping judge the pro cups, the yeah. Vans pro cups, and then filming for shimmer and then cult trips. Like we went to um, Germany. That was a cult Vans trip and New York city, like literally like Australia, like so much, so much happened last year that it's kind of like a blur when I think about it. So um, but anyway, so native land got kind of put on the back burner. So, uh, when I got back in town after all this traveling, I was like, I was just like native land needs to, you know, get, get back swinging. So I talked to Vish about it and he's like, yeah, let's just start filming for it. And, uh, it was crazy. Like started really getting back into it in like November, December. And so I filmed like those two months at the end of the year and then, basically from then until now, like, cause you know, all of us have been home, haven't been traveling that much. So again, you know, <clears throat> trying to turn a bad situation into good. Like I'm so used to traveling and being gone, but since I didn't have that in my life, I was like, I need to still stay as productive as possible. No, that's, Native lands are amazing because you, you. you do Thank so you. much cool stuff on the road and that's like your thing you get to do in your home. And yeah. then this whole COVID thing happened. So you're like, oh, I can work on my baby. Exactly. <laughs> and I yeah. feel like they always turn out well, they turn out different because your on-the-road projects have their own magical piece to them, but these mm -hmm. are always cool because it's like, you know the spot, you know when you feel 100%. You could tell like your native lands are like you doing you, Thank you. at its finest. Yeah. Thank you. No, that means a lot. And that's kind of where the concept came from. It was like, I was filming with Vish for the first one, but we didn't have a name for it. It was just like, oh, just filming like a web part, you know? Like yeah. I just come off like a bad knee injury and I was like feeling good again, feeling strong. And I was like, I just want to film a part like... And then I started thinking, I was like, everything's in California that I filmed. I was going to say, is it, is it all California? It's Have all you California. road tripped out of the state? One in <laughs> native land too. There's one or two tricks. I think only one from Vegas. And that's still, that's still a yeah. quick drive away. It's yeah. like you could consider, you know, San Francisco's further. Yeah, so it's exactly. like, it's still your native yeah. land is like a quick drive from your house. Yeah. And that's a good point. I never even thought about it like that. But, um, since then everything's been in California, like this one that's so cool. in particular, like 
there's stuff I've never seen people ride. That's like, but you know, I had to drive two and a half hours away to get to these spots, you know? And it's like, that's the, to, to have a reason to do that stokes me out so hard. It's like, well, I'm filming for this part. Of course I'm going to drive two hours. Like I need to find this stuff that no one's hit. You kind of put yourself in this position where it's like, you can work on the road, quote unquote work. It's what we love, what you love. But now you got this thing when you're, when you're home, you like got no excuse. You're like, yeah. I'm working on native lands too. I'm going to get in the car and drive. Exactly. And you know how it is. Sometimes you have like go, getting on the road and like being out filming is like a certain type of filming and a certain type of confidence. Totally. But then being home is a different type. Mm-hmm. It's like a, well, I'm home. If I slam, I'm just going to go sleep in my bed tonight. I don't have to be like in an emergency room in Japan does or that something add, like does that. Does that add pressure? Or I mean, like, you know, when you're, when you're on a trip, you're in Germany and you're like, I'm never coming back to this. So it is now or never. Like, how does that work when you're at home when it's a, it's a gnarly setup? Because I, I think you had a couple of things that you checked off the list that have been on your list. I'm assume. I assume your spot list of like setups is probably pretty long of like Piece potential. Of paper yeah. around the house, like, crosses. Yeah. You like wake around. up in a cold sweat and it's like the, the list is right there. He has so. a room of spots. <laughs> oh man, it kind of reminds me of that movie where, um, what is it called? Uh, is it connecting the dots on paper? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, and that's what I'm saying. It's like different kinds of confidence and different kinds of pressure for traveling filming and Mm -hmm. being home filming like the you're totally right when it comes to like being somewhere that you know you're not going to go back to anytime soon you're like well i'm here i have to do this you know and that gives you that like that little push that you need being home you don't have that as much because you're like well if i don't feel like doing this today i'm going to do it tomorrow or whatever but like this instance in particular it was super helpful for me because i'm like i don't get to be home as often as i am i'm going to take advantage of it so I'm going to go to these spots that I could go to other times, but since I'm home and they might be a little bit scarier than stuff I've done in the past, at least I know that like, I don't need to get on a plane in a couple of days and go somewhere. I'm I, like, you know, cause that's another thing that comes into play when you're, when you're filming at home, it's like, you know, you have a trip coming up normally within two weeks, you know, you know how it goes, dude, you're on the road all the time. It's like, so sometimes it's hard to check those big ones yeah, off the list when you're, you're like, like, if I roll my ankle, I'm yeah. literally, they're sending me to Australia and yeah. for a company that I have to produce. Yes, for. exactly. Or it's like, or X yeah. games is coming up and it's like, dude, like if I like roll my ankle and I have to go try and ride a contest, like something that, you know, that I care a lot about and I can't perform because of this, it's like, all those things come into your mind. It's a so. big mental game, you know? Like Dude, some does. of the best parts come from when you're a kid and you don't have X Games to go yes. to and you don't have that because you're like, you yeah. know, because you're just saying fuck it all the yeah. time because if you roll your ankle, I'm healing up and going to keep going. You don't... Dude. Obligations yes. make things difficult. And that's just a mental battle. You yeah. got to just... You have a beautiful balance of it, you Thank know, you. where you're like, you're thinking of it like crazy and then you get to be home for this time being and you're like, you understand, it's the time to do the scary yeah. shit now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's and no then, trips planned for a little bit. Yeah, Let's do it. Yeah. So now that Native Land 4 is officially done filming, where does it, uh, what's your confidence level? Because I feel like the fact that you're saying it's done, like, I feel like that means you're pretty confident with it. I'm, I'm actually feeling really good about this that's one. Awesome. And, you know, everybody that's filmed multiple video parts know that, like, you feel different at the end of each one. Sometimes you're like, dude, I'm really happy with this. And other times you're like, dude, I wish I could have gotten a little bit more. And it could be injuries or you traveled too much or whatever there's so many factors mental battles all that this one i think considering circumstances and like also again just being able to be home and and have a little bit of a routine and eating well and all that like has been super beneficial and cool being on a program you know yeah so um yeah stoked that so confidence you're hyped then, basically. When, yeah. So when is it dropping, I guess? Because I, there's a little bit of delay with this, so we're yeah. filming this. Uh, no, we're live. Oh, stop, yeah. stop lying. Yeah. Sorry. We're sorry. live. Sorry. We're live. Yeah. yeah. 100% live. Whatever day this comes out, this yeah. is the day it's filmed. We see you You're watching. You're good at lying yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, this will be coming out in the summertime. Uh, that's all I can really say. Okay. I don't know it exact. Why the big lead time? Um, Isn't it summer right now? Is yeah, it? it is summer. Oh, right. <laughs> I think it's summer is like August. Um, it's like October for yeah, us, right? It's SD. Well, I am hoping that, um, you know, fingers crossed, some things kind of um, get a little bit, I guess, like with with everything that's going on, like gathering isn't really an option at the oh, moment. Oh, I see. Maybe I'd have love a little to premiere do, or something. I'd love to have a little premiere yeah. for it, but I also don't want to like put people in a position where it's like, hey, if you want to see my part, you need to, you know, 
you need to subject yourself to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah to getting COVID. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm like, I don't want to have to put people in that that's position. Cool. So like that's kind of and you know, I hope that doesn't come off as like me, like, oh, check out my part. It's like, no, I just like, you know, we put a lot of work in for these things. And it's like, it'd be nice to show it in, in that type of light in that like, well, yeah, I, I worked hard at this and I'm proud of it. And I'd like people to see it in this environment instead of like looking at their phone yeah. and seeing it for the first time. Another good get together for people. I, yeah. yeah awesome. I think at this point with that. anybody bringing people together is, is a good thing now, under certain circumstances. So exactly. I think we're, I think we're all maybe looking, not at the club right now. Yeah, exactly. But like we're <laughs> yeah, all, yeah. we're all looking for, for something to do, you yeah. know? So, um, what I guess I'm, I'm trying to figure out which, like, how hard is it for you to film a spot, uh, film a part these days? Like you, you have to have like every, spot within like 50 miles of Costa Mesa, like fairly well locked down. Are, do you, are you having to venture out to places that you've never gone to? Like, what yeah. is that, what is that process like? And what are you looking for? You know? Yeah. Um, so the good news is like riding's always changing and like your style, like is always changing, evolving. You might look at set setups that you've been to before differently six months later or a year later. So it's like everything always stays fresh as much as like you get burnt out on spots, like whatever. I'm sure everybody that rides stuff in their hometown gets burnt out on it, but it's like, you also end up looking at it differently if you ride something a lot. So there's, a, there's that aspect. And there's also the aspect of like, dude, California is endless, man. It, it really is, is endless. There's pockets everywhere. There's places like that I'm still finding that are only like 15 minutes away from me. Okay. And it's like, I, and the thing is, it's like, I always think like, Oh, for me to search, I got to go pretty far now. Cause I, I, most of the time that's the case though, yeah, you know, yeah. like, like I'm saying, like I literally drove two and a half hours for the day to get some tricks because it was stuff I've never seen anybody hit and stuff I was stoked on. And, uh, but then, like I said, there's the other side of things where it's like, dude, like there's stuff in Costa Mesa in the part too, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's like things just change and you go back to spots. And that's the other thing. It's like, I like building a story with my video parts. It's like, Oh, he did this at this spot, and then like two video parts later, he went back and he like did yeah. something. You know, that's what we're yeah. so like Levi's video, like Ice the Rail, Colt video, like Ice One Eighty. You know, yeah. like yeah, that is that is true. It's like the evolu evolution of you as a rider and the evolution of bike riding in general and stuff like that. I think it's cool, like like for the for the nerds out there that actually like. Uh, you know, pick apart videos. Like it's cool to see stuff like that. Like, Oh shit. Do you, you know, do you like, pick your own music? Cause native lands, I mean, I'm sure for other big companies, you don't have the full capability to pick your own music with music libraries and everything like that. But native lands, the soundtracks are so good. They're always like you. shit. You never heard before. They always get saved straight to my Spotify. <laughs> Is that you're doing? Yeah. Um, me and Vish like go back and forth with music a lot. Like we're just like, Hey, check out this, check out this. But like for the most part, all the native land stuff has been things that like have come up like randomly when I'm listening to radio on Spotify, where it's just like, I like this style of music right now. Like I'm jamming on it. So like, you know, you kind of, you find one song and then you start a radio from it and then you hear another artist. And mm -hmm. then it's like, next thing you know, you're 10 artists deep and you're like, Whoa, I've never heard this dude. Like my last part, um, Gene Clark. I love that song. Dude, I love that song so much. It's so still like, good. normally after I film a part and I use a song, I'm over the song after. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't want to hear it anymore. No, that that's I can still a good listen one. to. Yeah. But that was strange because like, I didn't know anything about Gene Clark. And he's like, he's one so of the, good. Yeah, he's one of the lead singers from the Birds back in the day. And I didn't know that. So it was like, and then also learning about music through this through the search and through um, video parts and everything. It's it's cool, you know? That's sick. Yeah. So it's kind of like hand in hand. It's like the, with the native lands, you're filming these parts, road tripping around, and you probably find the song on the way to the spot. How, exactly. I love How it. much does Vish lean on you for, for music choices? For Because I feel like you're, you're part of even just like general cult videos for other people's m music choices and stuff like that. I feel like you're so immersed in that. Like I feel like you have a catalog of like... <laughs> potential spots and songs for stuff to use. Does, does Vish lean on you a lot for that? Or is that, is that, is that all him? Um, he doesn't lean on me a lot. No, it's like, uh, I, I think it's less of a lean and more of like, I can contribute if he wants me to, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I think I'm constantly, even if I'm not working on something, I'm constantly like sending him stuff and being like, Hey, like, you know, if you're working on a video with Preston, this might be good or whatever, you know, yeah. it's like, cause you know, I, 
I'm not selfish when it comes to music. Like I'm like listening to it and I'm like, sometimes I see other people riding mm -hmm. to yeah, it, yeah, you know, I'm yeah. like, Oh dude, this would be sick for AK. You yeah, know what sure. I mean? Like yeah. something jazzy or flowy or whatever. And it's like, I think, um, you know, you can, you could almost like coordinate people's styles with like music, yeah, you know, for sure. So yeah. that's cool. cool. And yet, talking about Colt, it seems like you and the, the original dudes, like you guys are Colt, you know, like you and Chase, AK, Ch Chase and Chase, you know, like the Robbie, it's like, it's not just Robbie. It's not just the guys behind the scenes. It's you guys, you know, like you're sending songs for Preston and the AMs and the mm -hmm. dudes coming up. Like how, how much of an impact do you guys all have on Colt? Like what's your relationship there? See, that's, what's so cool about the brand. And I'm so thankful to be a part of it because it's like that. It's like, Seems it's like not it. like this head honcho. And then like a bunch of people like, well, what if we do this? And then we bring it and present it to, Rob. it's like, we're all talking and we're all like, you know, granted, like, yeah, there's got to be somebody that makes the decision, but like we all have an opinion and our opinions all get looked at and thought about. And, um, I've always felt like I've been a part of it in a, in a big way. You know what I mean? And I'm sure. super thankful for that. And I think, you know, chase and chase and AK, um, you know, everybody feels the same way. You can so. tell, like even in videos, you're like, Oh, chase probably picked that song. Dak had some input in that. This is all Vish. You know, it's like, it's, you guys are such a family. I love yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. Decisions seem to run through the whole, the whole van before yeah. anybody yeah. makes a decision. Yeah. And it, you know, it's like, I think, Again, that's what like makes it feel that's why I'm so thankful to be a part of it and it feels so special because like it just it feels like more like that family vibe and more that like things are more natural and it's less like well it's less structured. I don't know. It's so, so good. Like, thank you. From an outsider's perspective, I'd say all the other companies right now are like looking at you guys. Like you're the example. Like <laughs> yeah, how, from, how from, from the like, outside, it just seems like you guys are just machines. Like the the amount of I that mean, too. It, that like, too. Like Vish is just the the way he's able to churn like quality video content out. Even even like stuff that he doesn't necessarily film himself, but he just cuts it together. It just it's keeps like, coming. Yeah. It's, it's like, like <laughs> oh fuck. Here's, dude, an, here's another one, and yeah. it's still fucking good. I'm gonna click it. You know, like, you know Sick. it's gonna be good yeah, now. They went so to New York. They did a video here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I got an AM video coming out. Yeah. It's like Jesus, and it's yeah, it's crazy. I always, jo I like, always joke that if Vish gets a girlfriend, you guys are fucked. <laughs> I know, dude. I know, dude. <laughs> Sorry, Vish. Don't do it, Vish. Don't do it. It's a trap. Um, no, uh, Dax got a girl, and he's totally he's working. Yeah, yeah. dude. Nothing Dax changed him. We, we talked about this before. It's really funny. You got a girl. You're working hard as hell yeah. too. Look yeah. at you guys. Yeah. 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 Eternal battle is what we said. Vish, earlier, you could get though. a girl, yeah. man. You got it. I remember when I first got married, like and this was only like 10 months ago now, like people were commenting on my Instagram, like, Oh, we'll see oh. you later now. <laughs> you know, like, Oh, you're done now. Like it's a wrap. literally. And I was just like, dude, I'm literally getting home from my honeymoon tomorrow and leaving for a trip in three days, yeah. like back to back <laughs> vans and then cult trips. Like yeah, I'm surprised you didn't out, bring man. a filmer on your honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> Get some clips out there. <laughs> I was dude, I was spot searching on the honeymoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My, you my can't wife, turn it off. My, yeah. my no, wife you can't. Goes, I, I watch movies so and see spots. So sick pointing out spots. It's yeah, like, yeah. Like I don't. I try not to anymore unless it's really good. Even like TV shows, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. They shown that. They have shown that spot four times. I have to point it out now, like to my wife. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to turn that one off. No. I think it's I don't too know if deep. I want to. No, no I, I know. It's, it's like a. It's so entertaining. Know. You know, you're always like. It's half I feel the, like it's half the game. I feel like older generations put a bit of an age limit on. The whole thing but now it's like with health and mindset it's like dude i don't know if i'm ever not gonna want to do this and i, I no. know you're the same like yeah you are not looking at being done filming and getting clips and no and i mean like you have to accept that that's you know that's a time in everybody's life that comes but like it'll be a prime but yeah it's like but also like you said it's like there really doesn't have to be a, like an actual like set limit right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even look yeah. at sk in skateboarding and in BMX, it's like, dude, we have dudes that like are still really pushing themselves and still putting out quality stuff and still really stoked on what they do. Why do you want to take that away from them? And it you used know? to be like, you know, 30, that's probably yeah, yeah. whatever. There's these ages. And then you got guys like Sergio Leo. So like, I don't even know how old he dude. is, but I remember being like a little kid and he was already making video parts. Sergio still looks like he's like 20. And when he rides, and it's he like. he still rides like he's 20. He does like, it good where he doesn't film crazy constantly, constantly, constantly. It's just like when you see him, it's like, yeah. well, you're twice as good. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like he's so ah. steezy. See, that's the thing. And it's like, 
You we know? have inspiration now to see. Yes, inspiration. We always had inspiration, but back in the day, those guys didn't have, they were sending it on vert ramps and putting mattresses on the bottom. You know, they were pioneers more mm-hmm. than anything. So they, they might have a cutoff date at some point yeah. when they're like, <laughs> you know. The slams used to be The slams harder. were yeah. different. The slams were harder. I think that's, for me, obviously, I'm I'm old. So, like, I feel really not good. Old. I feel really good on my bike. Like I, I still feel like great, but I don't. I don't want to fall anymore. I feel like whenever like, you show up to so, a skate park, people are like, "Damn, Fudger can ride." I'm yeah. like, "Hell yeah, Fudger <laughs> can ride." Rips, yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. I was just thinking about you at uh, UCI. Oh, we're the calling other Fudger day. out. Yeah. He's blushing oh, over yeah, here. Eating, shit, that, eating but, shit. But come on, that that hub is huge, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, that king tuba. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, and rounded. That was a horrible yeah, idea. Yeah, super rounded. <laughs> it's super rounded. I thought but, I was. I thought I was invincible that day. I was doing. I did everything that uh, I wanted, and I was like, "I'll do this," and just destroyed my. Yeah, ankle, so. yeah. <laughs> um, I think the main thing that comes in into play, like when you get a little bit older, though, is like the risk and reward thing. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. It's like you're like you have well, so many mental battles, more yeah, and more and more. And it's dude, that's well, it's like wisdom. Wisdom. You like when to walk away from something. When to when to be like, all right, this is the moment. Yeah. So well, and I've like gotten in. You know, I deal with mental battles like crazy. I have, yeah. I've had anxiety and problems since I was like three with that type of stuff. But um, oh, basically, yeah? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, dude, I've, <laughs> I'll get into it. I'm not scared to talk about it. I want to normalize I think it's this stuff for yeah, people. Yeah, I think it's yeah. important. Um, so, you know, people are like, oh, I'm so OCD. You know, it's like they're talking about like being clean or whatever. Yeah. And it's like. Sorry, that's all knocking good. stuff that's over. That's all good. Demo hit the mic like five times. Yeah, yeah. Was hard. The, the, the dog's gonna be up <laughs> on the table soon. The, yeah, yeah. the cat, the yeah. cat jumps on your shoulder. It's, that cat's yeah. rad. It's a loose um, podcast. So I like no. I knew I battled with something that I didn't understand for a long, long time. Like mm-hmm. I said, ever since I was three, I didn't get diagnosed until like last year. Diagnosed? Yeah. Like I, I had to go to like a mental health professional because I you know, struggling so bad. And I felt like nobody understood what I was going through. But like, so, you know, bringing back the OCD thing, people say like, Oh, I'm so OCD. Like, and it's like, yeah, that's, you know, that's a pretty common thing to say, but like, that's actually a, that's actually a horrible thing to have. I have it. I have, um, it's like called like pure OCD though. It's more like, um, mental compulsions and rituals. Mm -hmm. So like OCD is like, if, like the one the the form that people know about is like oh flick the lights switch this on needs and to off be and on yeah. this many times otherwise this will happen yeah. you know what I mean and like I didn't realize it I was doing that in my brain like where I'm like okay I need to like do this and this and this otherwise this might happen or whatever and it it got really bad and I didn't understand what was going on it's driving me nuts do you have an example like a real like what a BMX example of it like what was what was happening well. I, so, you know, we all get like bad thoughts when we're like going up to, well, at least I think a lot of people get bad thoughts. Like, well, if this goes wrong, this is going to happen. You know what I mean? Mine just started increasing so bad over the years where it was like, it was keeping me from doing things that I knew I could do that I was confident in doing. But like, I have, um, they call them like, you know, like, uh, intrusive thoughts, like mental visualizations of something catastrophic happening. So like a slam. Like a slam. Like I'm at the top of the like stairs the worst slam and I'm like, you could think of. I'm going to miss and then I'm going to go straight to my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I could not get that image out of my head. Oh and my it's, God. Yeah, it's, it's, dude, it's really not fun and I still struggle with it, but I'm thankful that I, um, I've learned about it and I've learned some tools that, that are helpful in those things. Cause basically what our brain does is like, it's always trying to protect us. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, if you're an anxious person and you tend to be obsessive, like, you latch on to things that you care about that scare you. Like I care about BMX so much that like, obviously my brain is giving me these thoughts that like, Oh, well, if this happens, you can't do it anymore. You're going to slam and this is going to happen. It's like a really bad mind. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been struggling with that. Like, my whole life. That's so surprising for somebody to hear that. Like, I, I this is the first time I have heard that. I, I, we've yeah. talked about anxiety briefly before, but for for somebody like you who appears to be fearless in a sense, you know, like that's that's so surprising. Do you visualize hear. landing it too, or was it always just these I, bad things? I have a really hard time visualizing landing things. Unfortunately, that's yeah. real crazy. Yeah, most, I know, I know. Has it's, it gotten worse for all the, over the years? The thousands of clips you filmed, you've just pictured landing on your head yeah <laughs> like how do you when keep i was doing younger it was, when i was younger it wasn't as bad it yeah. didn't it didn't really start spiking till i was like 25 26 but like also you got to realize like 
Dude, your um, your uh, what is it? The front of your brain. I can't think of the frontal name. lobe. I don't know. It's uh, not like, the frontal like, lobe. Cere- I don't know anything about the oh, brain. Look at me. Yeah. Whatever Dennis? it is. <laughs> it's not. It's we need not, a lookup guy, man. Yeah. It's like your logical part of your brain. It's not fully developed till you're 25. Oh wow. Uh, so it's like you're. That's why like kids are sending it so hard because like literally, and it's like it's not out of disrespect like that I'm saying this. It's out of like their brain isn't developed all the way, yeah. and that's why I felt more confident back then because I I didn't have to think things through all the time, but. Um, <clears throat> it makes so much sense. I've never heard it like that though. Like, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, that's, that's the reason why you can send it when you're younger. Yeah. You don't think about the consequences well, that, so in a sense, in a, in a, you know, oversimplifying things, mm-hmm. but, and it's almost easier not to, when you, well, it's almost, it's more dangerous, but when you don't think about every single thing, it's like, I could do this. Instead it, when of you're really, not focused. Yeah. When you're not focused of, on the consequences. The thing is, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. It, I don't think it is more dangerous because you're, you're more in tune with your confidence. A hundred percent. Now I'm confidence too, I'm too in tune with like, um, like the risk side of things than I'd like to be. But like, so you could be confident with something, but you picture these bad things yeah, happening. Exactly. You picture not going to X games, quote yeah, unquote. Yeah. And then you start thinking, so, should I do this? When really you could just bust that shit out probably. Yeah, with, exactly. With your it's like, I know the thing is like my core beliefs in my heart. I know for a fact that the things that are terrifying me, I'm going to be okay and I'm going to do it. Like things happen. So like, has this work, the the mental work helped to like understand absolutely. like this is just something that's, it's, a, it's an issue. It's not really what's going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. So basically like I had to like play with it to like unlock it a little bit. It was like I had to still make myself do things even with the vivid images yeah. that I have running through my head of things going terribly bad. I'm like, well, I'm seeing it this way, but watch this. I'm going to do it and it's going to work. And I, I started like, I started doing like things. Like proving it wrong. Yeah. I started doing things like to, when I was distracted to prove it wrong. Like, you know, sometimes like, oh, a car's coming over there, even though it's not in my way, it's in like this, it's in yeah. my side view. So I don't really want to like do the trick because it's like, oh, I did that you know, same thing. Yeah. But- I started doing things purposely when things were distracting me to like yeah. prove to myself that like, Hey, huh. even with this mental distraction, this, this is, this is a thought, this isn't a fact, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, you have to almost, and not to say that that has solved everything, but that's been super helpful. You know, it's, it's kind of a random aside, but you, everybody has their own different scale of that. Some people, some people turn it on when mm-hmm. there's a, when there's, you know, a little crowd forming and somebody else is filming and then you get another guy where if somebody's filming, like, and they just fucking hate it. Like they mm-hmm. didn't ask permission. Like, I don't want you to film. Like, can you please just keep moving along? Mm-hmm. And then there's other people that like literally nobody can, nobody can even be glancing at them mm-hmm. while they're about to ride. Oh, it's yeah. such a different scale. Like, did you ever ride with Gabe Brooks a lot? Um, I did ride with him like, yeah, a decent amount. He hated anybody looking at yeah. him. Like, this there is was the a same car, way. He like will not anybody, go. Dude, dude, dude to be a hundred yards away, like walking and just not stopping, just walking and just like, Oh, here's something to look at. And, and he wouldn't, and he would not ride. Like he just would stop. Yeah. And, and that's the like, thing. It's different for everybody. It's like different for said. everybody. Yeah. RIP Gabe. Shout like, out to Gabe Brooks. He's the man. Yeah. That dude is yeah. the man. Yeah. God. Straight but up. It, it, it just, it's, it's interesting how this, the scale works for people and, and to hear you, talk about this like what it, did it affect you in every like driving down the road how, how do you think this like affected you on a daily basis outside well, of it the still universe? does yeah. it's like basically i'm gonna have to deal with it forever yeah. but like um unfortunately like but things once you realize what's going on and you have a better idea it's easier to to fight these battles you know yeah. what i mean um but i mean you know to bring it back a little bit like I used to just have like it was so crazy like I'd have the craziest irrational fears when I was a kid and I didn't like I would freak out like I would uh it's like dude what if I like it was always what if thoughts what if this happens what if that and like I couldn't get my mind off of it they get stuck on those things but with that being said BMX has been like a huge savior when it came to that stuff because when I was younger and I found skateboarding and BMXing it took my mind off of everything I was battling with and it allowed me to like, cause when I was younger, the, the intrusive thoughts weren't attacking skateboarding yeah. and BMXing. I would just send it. was the it. escape. Yeah. It was the escape. Yeah. Exactly. And unfortunately getting older and, you know, having more responsibilities and all those things come into play. And it's like, then it, then the thing that is your escape also turns into like your torment sometimes, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, but like I, but you can is, remember as a kid, it was always your, your way to prove yes. that those, those thoughts that you weren't like completely convinced with, you could 
Mm -hmm. You could prove yourself like, Mm -hmm. no, my real confident thoughts are more important than these what if thoughts. So what was the moment that you were like, I need to go see a doctor? Uh, (laughs) I actually, I started like going and seeing a psychologist when I was 25 because it was, it wasn't all the way related to BMX then. It was just like, my mind felt like it was racing so often that I couldn't focus. And it was like really, um, it was becoming increasingly hard for me to, um, I don't know, feel joy, (laughs) like, unfortunately, you know, the reality is. And, uh, yeah. So, and then things started, you know, it's, it's also like you go through phases in life where like things are more stressful times in life are more stressful and like they wear on other people uh, or they wear on people differently. You know, Mm -hmm. for me, I, um, took on a lot of stress from things that might not have stressed other people out as much, you know? So those things would spike it you know? So, and then it got really bad a couple of years ago again. Um, I don't really know why, yeah. but I got a spike and, and then I ended up like doing a little bit more research and started reading books on mental health. And I was like, Oh wow. The things that they're talking about right here, are the things that I experienced, no psychologist or doctor has ever been able to like describe it as well as I'm reading it right now. Wow. So then I did my research and I was like, I think I should go see somebody who specializes in it. It's called a cognitive behavioral therapy, like CBT. And it's basically like looking at your thought processes and being like, that's not helping my life and not helping the things that I value. I need to be able to look at things from a different perspective. It's basically like changing your attention and your brain to other things. Yeah. Yeah. Just the process of, of how you get to the conclusion and, yeah. and the method. Cause wow. you think like, Oh, I'm born this way. It's going to be like this forever. It's like, no, that's not the case. Yeah. We have, we have things that we've learned behaviors that we've learned that aren't helpful for us anymore, but we hold on to them because they're things that like are embedded in us from being kids, yeah. you know? So you, it's almost like reteaching yourself something. So I don't know if this is too deep. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I agree with the, I understand what you're yeah, saying. So. It's so true. You get domesticated by parents and yes, teachers and yes. other friends and you just take all this information and you think it's true. And yeah. then you get to a certain age and you could start to be like, well, or you this just is accept- bullshit. the lack this is of bullshit. accepting that, yes. that, that it's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this way. I'm supposed you to control be your life. naturally yes. afraid of this. Well, and that's like, the thing. It's like I've, I've people struggled. People forget they control their own lives. Yeah. 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 You're by your decisions and the things that you value, you know, like I, another thing that came with it and it's, it's super weird. These two things coincide a lot, but people that deal with like a lot of anxiety and depression deal with a lot of guilt, even if they haven't done anything wrong, you know, it's like, that's where it comes from, dude. It's like, I've, I've felt guilty, like a lot of my life for no reason. I don't even know why it's just this like feeling, but then you realize like feelings aren't really facts just because I feel some way. doesn't mean that anything needed to cause that feeling. Yeah, like I did, yeah. it's not cause and effect, yeah. you know? Would it and be I, like you judge yourself for things yeah, and when yeah. no one else gives a shit yeah, and you're just like yeah, over judging yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Oh my God, that was so dumb that I did this or so bad. Like, and it's like, nothing. and you keep punishing yourself over Punish and over it, for yes. no reason. When it's like, you already understand what you did that you don't like. Yeah, it's like, you gotta yeah. just move on. I get, I'm the same man. Like, yeah, it's hard, you know? Yeah. And it's like, even if people don't experience the things that I'm talking about on like a severe or high level, I'm sure everyone, everybody can relate to it. Relate to it. Yeah, I relate to it like a hundred percent. Like it's been, I I've said for years that like when I was wanted to do something that I was scary, I would generally envision the worst possible case scenario. And if it wasn't, but if it wasn't that bad, like if I, if I could like work my way back from that, then it would be possible. But if I couldn't, like I wow. literally, I, there was literally be like a gap, like there was this gap that I wanted to do. And I, I remember this as being the worst case scenario was I couldn't not envision me landing face first on top, <laughs> on top of the, on top of the first stair and, and breaking my face on the top stair. And I couldn't and you're like, imagine that's it. too bad. And I'm like, I couldn't get away from it. And I was like, yeah, I can't do this. See, like, and that's like, what's crazy. But like. If that happened on something that you, one, I can do this, I can do this, but then you can't like get around that and that's a constant problem, like then, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's weird. If it's, if it's irrational, I guess is is probably the, I don't know if that's the right word or not. No, it's, it's a great word for it. But like, you know, when you think about it, like what it comes down to is like, yeah, dude, BMX is dangerous. What we're doing is gnarly. But we need to trust our talent, don't we? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. We got to where we are because we, um, we've we only done things that we feel comfortable in doing, or at least in my 
older in my later years, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? When I was a kid, I'd just send yeah, it, send you know, it. sometimes yeah. it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's like, you know, if you're, if you're in tune with your talent and, and what you're able to do, your capabilities, you're probably not going to try something that's too far out of range. Like yeah. I'm not going to hail Mary, like wall ride flare, like right now, yeah, I would yeah. love to do that trick, <laughs> but like, I'm probably not going to go do that right now, yeah, yeah. you know, because I've, you know, um, you want to work out the steps on the way yeah. to it. And then yeah. when you're ready for the wall, I play, yeah. you're like, I got this. And I, I want to film a clip tomorrow too. <laughs> I think too, like there's, there's, are you a, picturing it downstairs? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> that's what I, I just, pictured at first. And I was like, well, and then I was like, Oh, he could probably definitely yeah. wall ride flare bank to wall. Yeah. I want to do it at the, um, your the, wall ride, the one in <laughs> Bellflower. you know, that quarter pipe. That's the, what like, I pictured. After. Concrete. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Dude. I want to try did, it. He did on a scooter. I just wall yeah, rode yeah, it on a Super oh, no. 73. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that wall ride. Yeah. Yeah. The DAC scooter, wall ride, yeah. I call that. That spot's so fun. Yeah. Um, but, like, I think also what's been super helpful is coming to this, like, place of, like, listen, I, I've i already accepted the dangers of BMX from a young age, and I know that that's there, but I value it and I care about it so much yeah. that I need to um, – accept what comes from it because I'm not going to stop doing it. Even if it scares me, I'm not going to stop. I love it too much. Yeah. You know, you're hooked. So might as well get yeah. this shit out of there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like weird images. Like, yeah. So that's, what's been helping them. me a lot is like, obviously like the behavioral help stuff, but then also the, the idea of like, I've already made the decision. You know what I mean? I've already chose that. This is, this is what yeah, you made I the decision value. 15 years ago, yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. What, uh, oh, yeah, that's very interesting. I did have, I did kind of anger on, on my list. Cause when we used to shoot back in the day, we haven't shot recently, but, um, like if I felt like you would get to a hundred pretty quick with people that would, you know, like try and kick us out or whatever. And, and some, I feel like most of the time you were kind of right anyways, like you, you would get there quick, but like, yeah, the person was kind of fucking out of line, you know, mm -hmm. but it's like trying a clip and security. Yeah. Like security and, and stuff like that. Like and you I, blow I, up a little. Yeah, I yeah. Had, I had, yeah. you know, I but don't. I, do, I can't picture yeah. that. Is that is that gone as is that gone as well, or is it? I, I mean, don't I'm do sure it there's... like when it comes to like um, security guards and and police officers and stuff. Yeah. I don't do it these days. Like I uh, I don't know if it came with like you know being a little bit older these days and like realizing people are just doing their job. But like I think when I was when I was younger, like I mean, I think we were all aggressive. Yeah, we were a little younger, bit more you know? aggressive. Yeah, you know, like, you're just like yeah, you're just fired up, dude. Yeah. Like you just adrenaline yeah. hormones i don't know dude you're just super fired up yeah, when you're yeah, younger yeah um but these days i try i you know i try to th think before i speak a little bit more often yeah. you know what i mean um so yeah i mean but if if a dude's being a dick if a security guard's being like a dick <laughs> yeah, and not yeah. even like trying to show any sort of respect like dude, i was just with like garrett and like um some of the fiend dudes the other day we were riding a spot it was a few weeks ago and this security guard came out swinging. He is literally, he was the biggest dickhead I've ever met in my whole life. He didn't even like attempt to like be like, hey guys, you know what? You can't be here. Yeah. He came in with his phone filming us yelling. He's like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Like, well, he was like, he was like, he's like, what? Like, you know, started like pointing out how old we were and that we were on bikes. Yeah, and then yeah, he started, yeah. he started, I don't even want to go into the things he was saying. It was like so out of Just line. Just out of line. But none of us really like, dude, we all like laughed at him yeah. and we all like pretty much kept it together. And, um, I don't know. But it's, if that was if that was twenty four year old oh, Dak, you would have got. Yeah, <laughs> and that's you guys are all older and you know nowadays. Like yeah. this guy's just coming out spitting poison, making fun of you, yeah. trying yeah. to talk shit. And if you guys just laugh and yeah. like don't take any of it personally, then you win. He yeah. has to be like, "Fuck, yeah. yeah, I did all that. I have no control over yeah. these guys, yeah. and I look like an idiot." Ugh. Yeah. yeah, I still struggle maybe he won't with be as like, bad next time. Uh, I, you know, I'm not gonna get out of my car or anything, but I still struggle with like road rage. It's yeah, like yeah. someone's oh, driving yeah. dumb or whatever. Have you, like, been, have you ever been in a car with that? No, I've been. We haven't done it's too much ride. together. Besides, <laughs> we've, been <laughs> we've been friends over the last couple decades. But <laughs> this this picture, me. this picture we're painting of me right now is like this is this mentally troubled. No. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know if I can go on a trip with I this dude. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> He's not worse than batters in the oh, driver's seat. No, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think you know what it is is like a lot of the a lot of the situations that we're in where we get frustrated at somebody. It's almost a projection of things that have gone on prior in the day or yeah, yeah, days course, leading yeah. up to it. It's like you're not really mad at the person for driving dumb. You you're mad because you drove two hours to try a trick and you didn't get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah, you're yeah. driving yeah. home frustrated. Yeah, you know? that's so it's how like, it always is. Yeah. With but. 
being I think angry. like yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Most of the time, and then if you know the videos you see of people like with crazy road rage, they for sure have something bad going. Oh on yeah, in yeah, their yeah, life. yeah. When you, you know feel great I mean? and somebody fucking pissed at you yeah. and flips you off, you're just yeah. like, well, yeah, you know, sorry, dude. Like, yeah. I'm sorry you're so bummed. Like, I'm not yeah. gonna get bummed at you back. But when you're pissed, you're like, yeah, yeah, fuck you. If, if <laughs> like, you're driving you home, yeah. yeah, like I dare you to get out of this. Get car, out of the really. car. You're falling them home and shit. Yeah. You're like, if you're happy, you're just like, do, 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 yeah. Do. yeah. If you if you just came off a four trick day where you got yeah. like four yeah, tricks yeah, you're yeah, hyped yeah. on, dude, you're flip you off. You're gonna be like, someone can rear end you and you can be like, dude, have a good day, bro. It's tight, dude. It's all. That's the thing when people are fighting and talking shit on each other. Usually, you know, when you're listening, you're like, you guys are both just bummed about something Dude, else like yeah. just be cool like something going on in their life you mm-hmm. know so those happy people so, don't fight <laughs> i'm i'm glad i'm glad that you're you're on the process and obviously you you feel like you're in a in a better place today than absolutely than you were i don't even know how old you are i'm, I'm way off with this every time i make a guess at age i'm i'm, I'm 20 i'd 20? say he's 20 20 years old 20 21 22 <laughs> 20 years just old. 20 cool yeah. congratulations Congra- sucks the bars are closed yeah. i mean i guess it doesn't uh, matter for you. it doesn't matter but, for yeah, me yeah so that's yeah. cool oh yeah i'm 32 32, I'm 32 yeah. yeah so from seven years ago you're obviously in a in a way better place and and yeah, you know, obviously. Well, I always so. thought you were in a good place. Make, we are making you sound yeah, crazy. Guess, <laughs> you're in a way like, better no, that's, place yeah, now. That's man. a funny Congrats. thing, though. Like, <laughs> that's a funny thing, though. It's like, um, it's not like I'm like, you know, obviously, like a lot of people deal with like these like depression, anxiety related things, and it's like you don't see it because they're yeah. struggling yeah. internally. You know. Um, well, did you see like Albert Mercado? Like he uh, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this because he he's posted a couple of stories like asking like hey has anybody dealt with anxiety and and oh, for I him, didn't know that yeah for him, for him he I think it's the COVID stuff has really like spiked his paranoia because he has a, a day job that he was working around a lot of people and he had to take a leave of absence because he was just dealing with the anxiety of like yeah you know one of these people around me is infected and I'm going to get infected and I'm going to spread it to my family, blah, blah, blah. And, and that really has been a, he said, it's a new battle for him. He's never had, he's never yeah. been anxious in his entire life. And it's and just it's, like come out of nowhere and he doesn't necessarily know where to go with it. And so to the point where he's like reaching out on an Instagram story, Wow, you know, well, and it's and, like, and to be honest, shout out to him for doing that. Yeah, you want to know why? Cause so many people keep it in. And that's why I feel like I'm, I'm, allowing myself to be vulnerable in yeah. this and talk about it because I don't want people to hold it in. If yeah. dude, if you need to talk to me about it, like I'm down, yeah. like, or if, you know, if I could be the segue for somebody to be like, Oh wow, I struggle with these things. Maybe I need to go talk to somebody. Like I want to be that person. Yeah. I think, I think, I think having, being open and you know, the, we had a conversation off, off a podcast, but just how everybody projects this idea of of the the Instagram world in the sense of like oh I'm beautiful or I'm rich or I'm really good at bike riding or whatever else like isn't exactly representative of like what's underneath that person. No. Everybody has their own their own issues and their own stresses. And <laughs> we were and just talking except about for, it. except for Dennis. No, it'd be funny. No, just Dennis is just the just <laughs> yeah, golden right. eagle. Yeah, I've never even it's... seen him frown. Oh, Eagle Lord. Yeah. Bullshit. It'd be funny to have an Instagram you just to post all the shitty stuff in your life. Like, wouldn't that be kind of, yeah. That'd be almost worse. Sad like, Instagram? Yeah, I woke I, up pissed today. Yeah, yeah. I, think I dropped the, my burrito. My paranoia is kicking. Let me check this camera. You guys can keep talking. Okay. I think... Um, you know, I wasn't here for that conversation, so... Oh, no. What I, We were just talking about how, like, when it came to, like, clips and everything, like, people post on Instagram, they're like, yeah, you know fun one from the park today but it's like dude you see them in real life and they're fucking took 300 tries tries, yeah (laughs) Yeah. and that's the thing it's like funny i've I've been trying to like be a little bit uh more i don't know what's the word i've noticed that it's really cool you you show the the story a little bit yeah Yeah. the first clip was like a fall recently yeah like it's like yeah yeah dude like we we have to fight for the things we care about dude i don't care who you are i'm i ride with the most naturally people matt sorry naturally talented people in bmx yourself garrett like Chad, everybody struggles a little bit, you know, at, from time to time. It's like, and, um, I don't know. I just think that like Instagram paints this picture. Like these people are just like, Oh, like, you know, they just land everything all the time. It's like, no dude, I I've seen the best riders in the world have a hard time and not get their trick, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of emphasis isn't put onto that. Cause that's not the point of Instagram. It's a highlight reel more than anything, but like, it is nice here and there to like, if I, you know, look up to a skateboarder and he posts some stuff and he talks about like, hey, this is a struggle. I went here five times, whatever. Or Gary talking about it on his podcast. Yeah. Like, dude, those are, and those, those like. It's motivating. Yeah, it's motivating. They yeah. create this. They're real people. 
Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, uh, how do you balance filming for native land and, and Instagram content and, and stuff like that? Like, what, you know, what is your approach? Because obviously I think, you know, it, it, you, from my perspective, you are just always out there and always, you know, like that, what was it? The, you, you went somewhere with your girl and then you found the fucking curve wall over the, over the trash can or something like that. that. And it was sick. like, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, that would only ha- like the, you know, the, the stars align. Like the only person that would even do this is Dak. He's he cold, dude. I don't know. Ch- Chase had Lauren filming him on, on her birthday. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, These cold dudes tight. just don't stop. <laughs> yeah. That was so tight. like, just like you're out there and it's like, you're just making it happen. And, and so how do you, like, what's your, what's your approach since we're, since we're talking about Instagram, I just think, I think you're pretty good at it, I guess. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank totally. You. And you do, like you said, a good job of, you got your video parts and then Instagram. Cause people, Everybody thinks Instagram just has to be me riding as best as I can. Well, like, it's like, like you can think way further than that. And it's cool to show you're really good riding, but you can post whatever you want there's and, the and tell a story. There he is. There's a beautiful dog. And um, you're doing a good job with that with showing falls and the you. crazy oh, missions and so shit. Also, I'll bring up another person is I've recently heard like like Brad Sims, like his his welcome to fit at it was was amazing, obviously, but I think there's this projection of like what Brad puts out on Instagram is so incredible that it has to be something else for uh, for this welcome to fit edit and and people are like let down they expect some like level 200 bike riding that's like not even possible at a point you know so right. what is like how do you differentiate between this and that well i think like you know coming up in the time that i did where like video parts were like the most important thing to me yeah. you know what i mean it's like filming parts that's first and foremost this is before social media so then when social media came along it was like this is like stuff that i'm not going to put in a part it's going to be stuff that's like you know it's me riding it's me riding like on a more normal basis not like things that i've had to go to five times to get the trick you know um but these days it's increasingly difficult the balance you know what i mean because it's like if you're putting the really bc level stuff on instagram like you're not going to get People think Views that's you or almost likes. too. Sometimes yeah, it's crazy. That too. They're going to think that you're not as good of a bike rider. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because they're used they to seeing. They think that's your video part clips nowadays. Like yeah. the average person, they don't get it. But it's it's really sad. Like you said, when like someone puts out a part and you're like, dude, it's like really, really similar to what they had on Instagram. I like having a little bit of a difference mm-hmm. um, personally for me because I still think that video parts are special. And I think that they need to. Um, show you in the best light and the hardest tricks you can do in Instagram. You could show that. And it's cool. Like, I guess I just don't, I don't like when I can't tell the difference between someone's part and their Instagram. Like there's no difference Mm -hmm. in level. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I just, I think in, in Brad's instance, like that has been his outlet for so long and that's where he's almost gained, like, if Brad didn't do what he did, he probably would have got would have not gotten on fit, you See, know, and, and like the second thing. coming of Brad. So it's like so now he's it's like, like the in third this, coming. He's had like yeah, three exactly. careers now. He's guys, been right? so good for so uh-huh. long. And um, it's like But and that's that's the thing. So he's like stuck in this rut of like now I have to keep up this Instagram yes. stuff and but now also I have to do video parts and I'm going on trips again. And how does, you know, like Brad's defense. So I think those clips actually are like really fun for him and and easy for him. And he's kind of just said, fuck the, fuck the line, you know, like you, you're thinking of it in this another amazing way. And then, but Brad's, you can think about however you want. But think about this dynamic. He just like, he didn't have a part to film for during that time when he was posted before he got on fit, whatever. It's like, so everything he was doing, it was his it was video part level stuff but yeah. he didn't have a video part so yeah. of course you're gonna put it on the ground he was yeah. smacking people in the face every exactly. day like re- reminding and like i'm not slowing down i'm still doing this until a company true. was like come I to us i can't hate on that no i'm definitely not hating i, I just I, but, i'm i'm more more in the sense of like like i i don't know how you would balance that like oh he's yeah. kind of like I, I don't know painted himself in the corner but I think there's a point too where you you can just be, you know, like Dak who's working on so many things and then his Instagram's another outlet for someone else like Brad or someone else who isn't working on a video part and they've kind of, the line has been skewed of what's what video part or Instagram. He's just like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. My Instagram's going to be banging. See, and that's the thing (laughs) and that's what's beautiful about BMX is like, yeah, like you could do it however you want, but I still, like, 
I care about video parts so much, and I I really hope that they stay they will. around. They will. Yeah. Like, so they can't like, go. They're like it's it's everything. Yeah, like, I, I agree. But like when you see things that could potentially be like knocking video parts down a little bit, it's yeah. like scary because you're like you protect you protect the things you love. You know what I'm saying? It's like you love video parts. If like a few things that are happening are potentially like taking away from that that uh. I don't know, like the highest of high. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, but don't you think though that, that the video part though, it's like with the song and the, the six months, a year, five years to make it, whatever it is, like that's like a little package deal that you're always going to watch. Instagram is seriously just like, oh, fuck yeah. And then you're, it's gone, you know, like that's, that's, that's the difference there. Like these For video sure. parts are always right there. Type them in when you're having breakfast and get pumped up to go ride. Instagram too is a nice little motivation, but at the same time, people follow thousands of people, mm -hmm. and yeah. there ain't no fucking time to go back and watch the last video because those people Dennis, have to put the a new Instagram one. Instagram compilation. Come on, we can yeah. do a compilation. You can make video. it. That's a thing too. You can make a dope Instagram <laughs> I'm joking, compilation. Don't make it. And that's the thing. It's like <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. Just keep I, shredding. I love your Instagram because you. But the thing is, like. You put the most, you do savage stuff on Instagram, but I've never seen it take away from your video parts. Thanks. Ever, ever. You know what I'm saying? I like, kind of more of just film like ramp stuff on Instagram though. And then, no, yeah. you put yeah. gnarly street stuff on there though, do too, I? dude. Yeah. It's probably just a re up from an old yeah. part and you've never seen it. No. <laughs> I remember, You're like, damn, this is good. It's like, yeah, that was five years ago. I remember when like Lacey was in town. A while back. Oh, you like that? Thanks. Yeah, dude, you were posting like the gnarliest street <laughs> but that's, stuff, but the, dude. You know what that stuff was? That was the throwaway stuff because that was when Lacey was town was when Rich was in town. So that was the throwaway stuff no, from this his video part. this was fun stuff, dude. Yeah, they would. he would film this. He'd be like, oh, I'm not going to film this for the video part, so just I'll just do it real quick for the gram. Fuck hey, my Instagram. Let me, Let's talk let about Let me envision else. it the way <laughs> I right? did, okay? Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Am I right? I'm right, though. You're wrong. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> He's not even listening to me. He can't hear me. I know I'm right. I was there. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Settle down. But anyways, Instagram, wherever we were talking about. Yeah. You're not a monster yeah. anymore. <laughs> let's, move, let's, let's get out of here. Damn, that segue. was graceful. That was graceful. <laughs> well, yeah. you have a new drink in front of you. It looks very healthy and you don't have the monster patch anymore. I don't have the monster is this, patch Is this anymore. for real? Yeah. Um... I'd been with Monster since 2000 and you said eight. very end. No, very end of 2010. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Decade. Yeah. Yeah. So like I got, I started getting paid in 2011, but like Davey Smith, who was the team manager at the mm -hmm. time reached out and, uh, that was through him and batters and Robbie Morales. Like everybody like came together and like, yeah, I was so stoked to be riding for them. Like it was like, that was at a time in my life where like, you know, I was riding X games and everything. I was riding contests, but it wasn't like anything. It was like, I was never on a podium or anything yeah. like that. So when they came to me, it was like, dude, this is, I'm so thankful that someone like a, like a bigger corporate company sees me as like someone who could be an asset to their brand without like being like the podium guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's like, it's, it's tough, a, it's dude. A, it's getting, you're, you're getting backed. You know, yeah. like it's like, oh, I can for exactly yeah. what you do. They're yeah. not expecting exactly. you. you. You haven't been yeah, a podium guy yet, even though you, you did do that eventually. Well, and that was the crazy thing. It was like the year I got put on, I got on the podium. Yeah. So then it was like, I remember, I'll never forget it. Davy Smith, he's, he's the man. Shout out to Davy. Yeah. He, he was like, dude, he's like, this is just so you know, this isn't anything we expect of you. This is amazing though. Like, this is so rad. Like he was like so supportive in it but yeah. again he wasn't saying like yep like now the rain the yeah. rain starting you yeah. know and like i had gotten on the podium a couple times since then thankfully like yeah. i don't, don't know how but um when the when the courses were above three feet tall yeah, yeah. Ah, you, I, you even got on there with some little courses too you you know how to do it i have that as a topic too so we can we can revisit <laughs> that one after the monster thing we'll circle back i can't hate bmx changes in all these different directions but BMX, I, no hold on we're, now we're skating, starting skating, okay, on, skating on, change yeah, in different skating directions than we had to use recycled skate is what, is what happened there but okay. you want let's stay with monster let's stay with monster let's stay with that yeah. i'm down to talk we'll, we'll circle let's move we'll move right into that the monster thing's very interesting though we yeah. Even... Um, so they treated you well for the eight nine years. Oh, dude, yeah. I can't I can't complain at all. Super helpful. Like obviously, like you know, allowing me to live the life I want to live, a pro BMXer. Like, um, you know, helping me pay my rent and whatever, get, yeah. get to travel above below. Uh, that was such a good time. Yeah. 
Having Shout Nathan out. on, Lacey, dude, like that's a sick crew. That was tight. Yeah. Ben Lewis, Benny. Lace, yeah, Lacey, Nathan, like that, dude, those times were so Creasy fun. even over on the Creasy, Europe side. Yep. Creasy handling business for us. Um yeah. Bay Rome, right? Bay Rome. Mm-hmm. You Bay were Rome there. Was a good one. Yeah. That was fun. That yeah, was you guys did fun. a lot of cool stuff and you did a lot of cool stuff for them with your yeah. your it was a good pick because you, you. you weren't just the contest guy. You know, Thank they had you. a million contest guys and And that's why I felt so fortunate to be on. I was like, wow, like this is so cool. Like even Davey said, he was like, dude, yeah, you're our street guy. You're like, we want to sponsor you for who you are, you know? And like to be talked that w- to, to be talked to that way from like a big company is like really a special thing these cool. days, you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, as time has gone on, like whatever, maybe not doing as good at, at <clears throat> sorry. It's all good. <laughs> as good at contests, you know, X games courses are changing. Things yeah. are getting a little bit smaller. Like I'm having a hard time finding lines, no excuses, but, um, I think that played into, you know, potentially them not seeing, uh, like value me as yeah yeah no, as much it, worth you know what yeah. i mean i mean x and monsters is, is like a main sponsor of x games like yeah. it, it's a huge deal for yeah. them every year like and that makes sense exactly. you know did you and, and, so did and, you quit or did they let you go no no i quit um yeah so you know the time came to like my contract was up and they were going to resign me but unfortunately it was a different amount of money than because you turned into their podium guy <laughs> yeah for a little bit and there's different team managers too right like yeah things, 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 things yeah, got a little yeah, bit different yeah yeah and sean was always cool to me too that's the thing it's like i can't hate you know it's yeah like, but it was you know uh, when when you have a sponsorship uh, that sponsorship is not supposed to last a lifetime exactly it, it, all things come to an end especially yeah. sponsorships yeah. so having a especially having big eight, corporate deals yeah <laughs> having an yeah. eight nine year deal with a with a company like that it's is huge. huge i'm super yeah. thankful yeah yeah so. and then it's like you know between like you know a little bit of a pay cut and like kind of like having a hard time really endorsing energy drinks you know personally because like that's not really like I don't really drink them. You know what I mean? It was them. Like, I'm not drinking them. And I was just like, well, you know, I look at like Colt and Vans and cinema and these are like people that I endorse heavily and I endorse the message and I, endorse. cause they're actually you, they're exactly. brands you like, you ride their stuff, yeah. you use their clothing and their shoes. Like. Yeah. So it, you know, it just becomes increasingly difficult to like really be down for something that mm-hmm. like you're not even really putting in your body, you yeah. know? And you know, I've been, your, uh, your health has been like, I mean, I, yeah. I, I feel like you've been over the last few years, like, you know, especially like it comes with age. It's like, oh, if I'm eating this and doing this, I feel better. If I'm stretching, Dennis, you know, it's like, dude, you have sure. like the most dialed stretching routine ever. I hear it from it. <laughs> Colin's like always talking about your stretching. It's a little routine. crazy, but I, no, I love good, it. <laughs> but it helps you so much and it helps you mentally and physically. So it's like, um, I don't know, like diet has, I've been playing with what I'm eating over the last couple of years, like figuring out what works best for me. And it's like, I want to be an advocate of like that side of things. Like, Hey, if, guess what? You could ride for 10 more years if you're eating a little better and what you're putting in your body is, is good. You know, you're so, in your early thirties and you got, you know, you can do, you can make it to 40 easy, easy. but you need to make those changes yeah. and those commitments. Yeah. You adapt. So you're so, putting good so stuff you have in a, You have a deal with that. I don't even know what that is. You, it it's looks been, good. It's been labeled away from me the entire time. Salty. Salty. Yeah, it's Salty. a San Diego company. Is no it? Way. Yeah. How sick is that? Um, but like they're like at like Whole Foods and um, Yeah, I've seen that brand Target everywhere. Stuff. They just do like ginger shots, turmeric shots, like um, all these like, you know, like what is it? Reishi? Is that the mushroom? Yeah. Right. Uh, they do like all these different. Like, it looks like you, it's got like even like fiber at the bottom. Well, yeah, that's it's the like ginger. More than, oh, wow. Yeah. But, um, Damn. yeah, so it's like, this is something that like, I feel good about endorsing and they, um, it's a really cool company that I respect and I respect their message. And like, even down to like, it's glass bottles, like, you yeah. know, down to this plastic thing and trying to be a little bit more mindful about the environment and those types of things. So it's like, it's, it works out really well. Cool. Stoked. And you're cool. legit. Like you just came in here drinking it. And oh, Budger even it. asked, offered you a coffee. And I don't think I've ever heard you <laughs> deny a coffee. <laughs> he, and you're like, I'm like, good. <sighs> No. Yeah. yeah. It's really hard for me. I love coffee so much, guys. It's really hard for me to deny coffee. But I, I in my in my defense, I smashed a iced coffee on You're the You're already good. Right. I'm You're fired right. up, yeah. dude. But dude, congrats. That's so <laughs> cool. You. To, you. you know, you made a a decision that you you could either take this pay or you yeah. know, moving into your early thirties with a more health conscious mm-hmm. sponsor and yeah, yeah. Fucking cool. sick. Did you not make a post about it? 
uh, it's not public. Yeah. Will it be public July first? When oh, is this really? coming out? Yeah. Oh, you still had a. Oh, When's okay. our live co- podcast uh, coming out? A uh, live podcast is coming out yeah. after July first. Yeah. Sick. I just I just got my first check <laughs> earlier today. Oh, from Salty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. That's what's up. Awesome. Well, congratulations, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dakota Oops, is on sorry. Salty. Hell yeah. Um, but you didn't make a post about mon- being off a monster either. I didn't. No. Yeah. Um, and it what's was, the point? The thing is, it's like people people see that it's gone. Totally. I, yeah. I didn't want something. F- I didn't want some something for like people to like see it and bash on monster. You know yeah. what I mean? I didn't yeah. want it to be like, it's like, no dude, I, and even if I wrote like, I appreciate all the support, but we're parting ways. Like people, Oh, F monster. Yeah, this, yeah, that. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't need people that. Dude. Will do that yeah. People know, yeah. like I, you know, I endorsed cool, them then. as hard as I could yeah. and they did a lot for me, but yeah. I moved on, yeah. you know? That's and cool. they do so much like in Gary's podcast, you know, he said no to Red Bull, but he's so appreciative yeah. of the things the energy drinks companies do for action sports. They yes. might, not all their drinks might not be the healthiest, but man, they fucking kill it with yeah. action sports Dude, stuff. Like, exactly. I feel like they're it's, all trying. I feel like they're all trying to do like yeah, more, trying, more healthy trying. stuff, yes. but it, you know they have the the stigma of it still being rock star, monster, right, right. Red Bull, you know. But, so, but again, like down to like the the financial side of things, like, dude, a lot of my friends are able to be pro bike riders because of energy yeah, drinks. Yeah. How could I hate on that, no, dude? They're not. helping them out. Yeah. Like, they they help me out for years and years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like even being a part of them for that time will continue to help me out because like it's, you know, you don't want to be like, well, this puts you at this level. You were on an energy energy drink, but it's like, it's something that's like, yeah, if you were on an energy drink, you must've, you must've been somebody, you exactly, know what I mean? Yeah. To a certain yeah extent. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a, it's a make it moment. Yeah. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Oh shit, I'm in this. And you that's know? the thing. Like, there was like a little bit of, of time. I'm going to be real about yeah. it. Like where after I was like, do I really want to like it? You know, it's like you, your ego gets affected, doesn't it? It's like I liked having that because I liked feeling like I earned this yeah. monster claw on my hat or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's like to like turn that down and start like moving forward. It's like a little bit of like a hit on the ego in a way. Yeah. So, How did it feel? Um, nothing against the Monster Army kids because it's like a way for Monster to bring people up. And I think they just give them a travel budget or something, but it makes Monster Team look like twice as big. Did that ever feel kind of weird? Because it was like a lot of legit dudes. And then it seemed like one year they're like, all right, put like a bunch of AMs on and we're going to build them up. And it looked like Monster to the normal person, like doubled in size. Yeah. Um, I didn't actually even know who was on the team. That's what gets crazy. It was like. the end. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, There's so many dudes on Monster and you didn't know who was on it's the It's definitely real a weird thing like because the, the army dudes, like obviously, you know, I, I for the people like i do some side work for monster so mm-hmm. um we've worked together yes we have multiple times um <laughs> <laughs> as he chugs his new health drink yeah. ah, <laughs> it's, so ah. it's so good <laughs> monster it kind of sucks it seems like i mean monster's like a, a lifestyle with the sorry to interrupt the no, thing yeah. real quick but like monster does so much like you work for them they do events it's like it is an energy drink but it's, it's weird almost that you can't ride for like the health drink and then like I guess I get it. It's both drinks. You can't yeah. really do it. But what could you buy for a beer brand and an energy drink? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's hit up like yeah. Let's get a beer. Let's, Pacifico. Corona. <laughs> let's, get, yeah. let's get a let's get a beer sponsor think, for the know. podcast. I think Stefan Lanchner and Ben Hinden were sponsored oh, by dude, what some about beer like, company back in the day. No, I think a bunch of skaters like ride for like June Shine and like those hard kombucha oh companies. I'm glad I don't ride for none of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that, <laughs> that, you want to come podcast? No. Will that be the end all be all, dude? It, June shines, baby. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. We had some of those in the house for a little while. They're can't pretty handle, bomb. They're, can't, they're, they're can't so handle. bomb. You don't even like. They don't even seem like they have alcohol. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, that's the decision. What about thing. like a? What about a? Uh, oh, wait. White Claw sponsor. We've, we, uh, the we end gotta of talk, me. The end of me. <laughs> yeah. We have to talk shit. We gotta circle back and talk shit. Oh, about so how a, lame contest course are now. Yes. Weird lead, yeah. weird ledge, weird five stair rail, weird. The same five bank. stair rail. Basically. I can get in on this on this conversation. <laughs> You're in. You're I'm in. in or out? I'm in. I'm down yeah. with oh, shit on that. <laughs> so first off, is I think I heard that well before the pandemic, I heard that X Games was going to do better this year. I heard. I didn't see any proof of that. I heard that. Well, I that would be um, tight. But in my pocket. But since we have since, since we haven't seen you would yeah. the course is going to be like since we so fucking sick. Wait, did you actually see help? the course? Uh huh. 
Oh, see, Dude, that's right, perfect. Sick. See, so before, right. like, before budgets and stuff, see, I'm learning now. Before we start talking shit, let me say. Before the we start talking yeah. shit, I was just about to say, but yeah. I haven't seen proof, so yeah. let's talk shit. But, but now Dennis uh, is giving proof. Before, before all this happened, I don't, I'm, I don't care. I'm gonna say it because yeah. no, X no, Games no, is no, even okay. happening right now, and yeah. you know who knows when it's gonna get going again. It will eventually because it's a badass thing. Yeah. But they were like, they were kind of sick of the whole skate BMX thing being combined, and we have to ride these recycled skate courses over and over and over again. So they're like, let's just do just BMX. And so I showed him a Metro Jam course and a Backyard Jam course. And I was like, this is everyone. Dakota Roach can verse Logan Martin at this. And we could just call it BMX. And they were like, oh, fucking sick. Also be one that course. That was going to happen? They, I could show you pictures. It was looking fucking sick. Dude, like, one, you're telling me they weren't going to do like park and street. It was going to be gonna like, be like just, a simple, it was gonna like be, a simple session course It was going to be called BMX. Just BMX. Like, wow. But then, but then budgets got weird. And they're like, all right, we're just doing mega ramp and street and BMX and street. And BMX and skate are going to be on the same street course. Yeah. But that street course this year was supposed to be, I hate saying it because it didn't happen, but that street course was going to be like the sickest Dude, one because the skaters yeah. wanted all bigger too. Because I went to a meeting with the skaters and yeah. they were like, fuck this little yeah. shit. Like, it's See, why does it get that trend, dumbed down I to think this? that trend is like, like the, you know, the technical Super tech yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just like, but there's oh, so many dope so skaters too who like can't do good. Like, they're, they're badass video part dudes. Someone like you who, when they get the course really small, it's like, this is just showing one little tiny side. Why not have yeah. small Good stuff, point. medium stuff, and big stuff? And Good that's point. what all the skaters and they were all saying that in this meeting. And I was like, dude, we need to make yeah. some shit bigger. Well, yeah, because like you said, it's like even in skate, it's like, dude, dudes are skating really big stuff these days. For sure. again. Yeah. And, and not that it ever stopped, but there was a lot of focus on like some of the techie flat ledge stuff. Yeah. Same with BMX, you know, Same and there's BMX. There's always a time for that. That's OK. But. It would also be cool to have the option to send yourself like over a 13 stair rail again. Yeah. You a know? park course doesn't only have six foot quarters. It has Dude. a six foot quarter, a 10 foot quarter and a 12 foot quarter. Yeah. You know, this like, is such a good point. I never even thought about it like that. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's like all the park courses have stuff for tech, medium and big. Like how come the, the skate course has just got tech? Dude, like the, so tech. The one year, the first year I got third. They had like an electrical box on the course. Yeah, that, uh, that was fun. Dude, the handicap Cap, pop. Oh, to the grind. And then you could gr- you could like launch off the roof yeah. into it backwards. Those LA courses in the beginning were epic. Like, yeah. Dude, they were so fun. The, they they, tried, had like they a, put so much effort into them, and then it was just like you could just see the effort just like yeah. going it's, down. It's every budgets, year. and it's seeing like how good those other but skate it was courses like, were it was doing. Like, it didn't I'm, I'm, I may be off, but it was like it was a, a street series, skate street series, the street it, leagues or whatever. Street, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Street, street league. Sorry. Uh, uh, s- <laughs> I know. No, no. Uh, Street League kind of like came in and was like, "Hey, this is what the skaters want," and that that kind of dictated it the whole way through, right? So it was like yeah. that that same rail was essentially the same rail that was at other events. Like that's how you can go to see a training facility, and that rail, that six stair rail or five stair rail, is the same rail that's yes. at X Games, and, and that's that, what they were doing. They were almost purposeful. Like- whatever the word is, but like making everything the same, like California skate yeah. parks and X games and street league was like becoming what the plazas were. It was like, yeah. but then what about the real street skaters? And then BMXers have to just, we're just having to use those courses and we're in the same boat where it's like, well now it's just like, it's like a X games is a tech street contest. How come yeah. it's not a street contest? Mm-hmm. What was the experience like for you when you're right, when you, when you'd roll into this course, Jack and be like, like a caged animal and be like, Hey, there's <laughs> He's bouncing yeah, off walls there's a, and you're shit. like, there's one, there's one wall ride and you push on it and you're like, yeah, I can't even wall ride this. Dude, like I was what? so bummed because I thought the whole back of the yeah. last course was yeah. a wall. I was like, Oh thank God. They put a wall ride on the course. Yeah. Um, and it was all it was was just like scaffolding and like net yeah or whatever yeah, and yeah. i was just like super bummed on that but to be honest dude i kind of liked last year's you did course. rip that one yeah it was thank sick. you i, I kind of blew it and it was really small though but you did find like you, well, you were just squeezing every dude, ounce yeah. of well, speed out of it yeah, they like, had like the little pocket wall ride that yeah. they didn't mean to build yeah. which was sick and like some other stuff um some gaps that yeah. you, if you wanted to go full speed Remember my bars went into my ribs. That oh my hurt god! So bad, dude. Yeah, that so was bad. Brutal. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was difficult. It's just difficult for me because, like, I you know, obviously, I like learning new tricks and I like progressing in that. But I like to progress like the way I ride more than like the tricks that I'm doing. So it's like find like bigger like wall rides or bigger. Um, I don't know gap to grinds or whatever it is Anything. You know? no rail is over stem heights like you have to bunny hop down on the stuff <laughs> but then for some reason the rails were like 
four feet tall at the bottom. Yeah. So going up them sucked. So yeah. it's just like, it's yeah. Just like, I mean, you know, I think, and again, like you said, it's like catering to one type of riding, which is okay. That's but like, like, but it should be invite only those dudes then. That's yeah. the thing. Bruno was, Bruno a, was an alternate thing. this year and I was supposed to be in there and I was like, this is, this is Bruno's course. Like, why would you even invite yeah. me to this? You should look at the course and, yeah. and make this yeah. decision, you know? But I mean, like, also was it just to hard? that oh, it's God. it's scary because like if you say no or you start saying no to these invites because the course uh you don't really like it then you stop getting invited so then it's Fuck like it though because it makes I, a change because i've agree. said no to like the last the guy, couple well the guy that gets invited to all three yeah events. You, dude i will i will invite you to a flatland but if you, but if you like, said no because up. of the course that makes people think you know because they want bmx in there it's dope it gets huge fucking views on there. that or they're just like oh yeah he's getting over contests yeah well you know? then yeah, right. Because they they're going to see you going to the Rebel Jam and having a blast. No, you the know? one year other... there was like a Corey and Nathan did get, didn't get involved. And then like there was like a whole press release saying that like, oh, no, they're just focusing on video parts. And it's like they never even said that. They wanted to write. The yeah, contest. that was a that was a weird. Year. That was strange. Who but knows? then they yeah. started getting invited again and yeah. they started like picked up where they left off. Yeah. Just shredded. There was yeah. one year I think Nathan, Nathan like literally should have won. And they were like eighth place. I was like, what the fuck? The year he did like the gap to switch hanger. And, oh like, my God. I, I was no, standing up it. like, oh, got, Nathan won. He got fifth. fifth or something. I, that I was swore that was Nathan year, won. I couldn't believe what happened. That was the year happened. that everybody killed their like last run. Like where it was like the top five were, were basically interchangeable. Like, True. I got fourth that year. I was yeah. hyped. Yeah. Dude. Every, I was like, yes. Every, you know, like X Games is like. <laughs> that was a pretty good course usually too. Usually people. Yeah, that course was fun. People blow it and then it's like easy to judge. Like that was the year that like everybody killed it. Like the top five or six like killed it. And that was like, a good year because that, that course was, was pretty contest. nice and consistent and flowy. Yeah. People could all land their runs. Dude, what about when my shoulder popped out just sitting there talking to you that year at X Games? There was no reason. <laughs> he was for literally that. in the athlete lounge and his shoulder just popped out. Dude, that was that was like the worst luck like yeah. spree I've ever had. Yeah. I broke my leg six weeks before on yeah. the dot, and I was like, dude, my bone was like this, like broken, broken. Oh. Somehow was good enough to ride by then. Got got cleared by the orthopedic. He's like, yeah, you can ride. You're good. And I'm like fired up. I'm like, dude, yes, I get to be in X Games. Like this is tight, you know? I'm sitting there in the athlete's lounge just talking to you and literally my shoulder popped out just sitting there and that's never happened to me before. He wasn't doing anything then. I wasn't doing anything and it popped out. I, I remember hearing that now. Yeah. Like I remember you having all the tape on and you know, like yeah. talking to you. I was just having that you a conversation with him and he just like... I think you like ran away. Like I, I was, was looking like, for Trish yeah. because I knew she would put it in. Yeah. And then I couldn't find her. So then uh I think the chiropractor guy there took me down to the uh medics and they didn't believe me because like, you know, like when you pop your shoulder out, normally you could see it's forward. Yeah. It went back. So it was like posterior. And you can't you can't mm. see it when you look at posterior. Even on an x ray you can't. You can only see it through like a scan. Huh. So then they took me to the hospital and You're they like, have to believe me, it's I was out. like, it's out. And uh, they took me to the hospital and they had to put me under to put it back in. And then what? I somehow like was able to ride the contest still. <laughs> That's crazy. And get fourth. <laughs> no, that no. was the next year. I yeah. sucked that. I, I had a really I wonder bad why. time. <laughs> yeah, wonder Off why. the broken leg, anesthesia. Like Dude. that's like getting a concussion kind of. Not really, but it fucks you up a little so bit. So why would your shoulder just weak. pop out? It just your muscles are so tight in the back or something and pulled I, it? Dude, I really what? don't know. I don't know. But yeah, it probably had to do with that. The thing that I could. So, so. I'm buff that you just pulled your own sh shoulder out it could have been from not right yeah. it could have been from not riding for so Don't long move like and then that. straight into oh, it's again. Out again, <laughs> um, it's no. probably just loose muscles from not riding so long and then getting into like a gnarly practice session and then you afterwards. know what i think it, it was was um i was rehabbing my leg really really gnarly like five days a week because uh -huh. it was broken and like the three weeks prior to being there i was like i gotta feel good so but i started doing a lot of upper body stuff too because i wasn't riding and I started like throwing the medicine ball at like a trampoline and catching it and doing that for like weeks before. And like, you would think that would strengthen it, but I wonder if it caused a muscle imbalance and then it just pulled it back, you know? Yeah. Or it could have been like moving in new ranges of motions that were pushing it, yes. pushing it, pushing it yeah. to a point where it just think like, yeah. it just was almost like your yeah. muscles probably were with a trampoline and the medicine ball. That was probably yeah. like over. Oh, it was a lot. Yeah. Overstretching and yeah. overworking out. 
So, anyways, that was that side story. Yeah. No, that was... <laughs> and I'm you totally just not like, riding. Totally like, ah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine having a conversation with somebody and then their shoulder pops out while they're just talking to you. Oh, I'd be terrified, that dude. Was, uh, yeah. I wouldn't I invite like, that dude usually, to a like, podcast. I, <laughs> <laughs> I used to be like Wong's go-to for popping his shoulder back in. This and was always With out, you, man. I feel like I don't think it would have... You would have just like squeezed my head off. Like, because it would like... You would always kind of put me in this weird headlock. It's so scary and about then, shoulders, like, too, because yeah. they... I think I've done it to you, too. I think you have gotten me back in yeah. <laughs> but me and me and wong's were the same but other people's like they're like dennis his shoulder popped out help him and i'm like dude if it's not i'm i don't want to fuck his shoulder up because yeah, yeah. they all pop out different there's yeah. every different way you can do it so you get pinched someone's nerve exactly like bad if you put it back in yeah. wrong and then it has to come out again and then go back in well right. i hope i never have to do it to anybody ever yeah. again but i've done it to like five or six people, our shoulders so. ain't coming out anymore yeah. um we're good dude we're good uh, another great segue what your cult signature your cult signature frame yeah what this is a question uh, question from justin he said that your the back end on your frame is a little bit long by justin today's Inman? standards justin benthian mm. of two cool justins BMX. um cool justins. <laughs> i'll go with inman over benthian sorry, sorry inman's man. tight dude <laughs> inman is tight remember the t- oh, snapper yeah. tapes yeah um so he said your, the back end on your frame is is a little bit long by today's standards and and kind of just ask like, is if it's if it's affecting not long at not all. long at all but i think it's like two five yeah that's long that's yeah, long that's I'm, long I'm, people have like 12 and a half yeah. now so like even like even how even, i get it though even for like, like just snap, like gary, snappy they, ledge stuff they make gary a a frame that is like not they don't make it they just make them like a that a doesn't make one, sense so. to me so Dude, so is it, is it an issue product. is it like what's what's your state of like like hey this is what i ride but like the trend of bmx is obviously going a, set, a different direction yeah. how's that how's that affecting i mean if they need to make less of my frame they can but it's like i like riding everything still yeah. i like riding dirt jumps i like riding skate parks i like that if my back end's any shorter and I go to air out of a quarter, I'm going to like 720 on accident. <laughs> and flying, like if you're going to do something at speed with a short back end, gets, it's it, gnarly. it gets scary. It's, it's loose. It's for it's, it's loose. for being close to the ground and I, doing I that get type it, yeah. of stuff. And I'm not, I'm not hating no. on that, but I'm saying for me and the way I like to ride. You still go fast as shit. I need a, I need a stable bike. Yeah. So it's stable. And it's like, the thing is, I think, um, I think that's what still kids don't get because it, it feels really good. For sure. Yeah. So, because the trend is like, you know, riding ledges low to the ground. That is a, street trend right now but it's like there's so many people that want to go fast at something mm-hmm. too and they're like i'm really good at all this stuff because my bike's set up for that but why can't i three a set anymore at speed why does it feel so sketchy and it's like yeah. oh maybe you need to find that balance there that the yeah. back frame has, you know? the only bike i've ridden that was super short was collins one time and i was like dude Baron his X, is and super I was like, short whoa but you notice a lot how he fucking, rides that yeah thing, though, no dude. it's amazing insane. but you notice a lot of those people get on those bikes and they sick ramp riders back in the day and then you can tell like it's scarier and scarier to ride ramps or bigger stuff so it's like you it, it, Colin's the frame, fucked though. I saw him like air like five or six feet out of like the big bowl of Linda Vista. Tour, Colin so. don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's that's the thing. Colin's so good, and he comes from the incline club, like True. Sh- straight beast ramp rider. But you do got to find that that balance of whatever you like. And I think people forget now that bikes are so. It's like a snowboard where you can ride like or a skateboard where there's every dimension. Now you got to yeah for sure. Got to know yeah, what you and, like and like. You know, back to like, dude, I want to ride everything still. Like, just because I love riding street and I love searching and finding new spots, it's like, dude, I love riding ramps still. I love riding dirt jumps. I came from riding dirt jumps. That's the cool thing with frame geometry. Now, people have like literally figured it out to where shorten your back end up this much. It's yeah. good for this bottom yeah. bracket height, frame yeah. height. Like, it's it's a it's a work of art. It used to just be like everyone's got a fourteen inch back end and that's yeah, it. Exactly. That's <laughs> and they're it. like, why is this so hard? Because your back end, you can barely fucking bunny up on that thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's good for trails. But then, like, look at a dude like Matias. He does not really ride a flatland frame, but like rides flatland so well on it and rides everything else. It's like he's like some people could literally just ride anything and do whatever they yeah, want it on it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, in Matias's defense he his bike is set up for what he does though because it's like a street and flatland yeah. mix it's actually like you know he designed that frame to be perfect for what he I wants i actually stole his geometry <laughs> really <laughs> yeah he knows that it's it's, all, it's right. all known yeah like i rode his bike on a van's trip his in bike's Japan, dope and i was like dude what is going on i felt like i could hop like a foot higher really i was like dude this geometry so good and then like i remember being like i i emailed neil wood at colt like i was like hey 
I got to change my geometry up. This bike feels too good. And Haro. Then, a Haro yeah. flatland. He's like, I want you to rip <laughs> off the Haro flatland frame. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was like, wow, no, that, he knows. that's cool. He was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, Matthias, I'm taking your geometry. This is so good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Haro's really, always looking all it really, at Colt yeah, what is, so. what is the What is the main difference? All it like, was was is, the, um, the bottom bracket height uh-huh. and the back end length. Okay. And everything else it's, was the same. I've heard, um, it, so you can the, change it up like crazy. Yeah. You got to try different bikes to see what you really like. It's I, pretty crazy. I'm one of the people that I feel like I can just, I can get used to ev- any type of bike. And I like, I don't think. Uh, I, Your bike is so ghetto though. Like you came over with it. Your tires didn't even have air in them at all. Because like, I don't ride. Because yeah, Even right. OB though, you need a little air. You come over, that thing was clanking. Chain was hitting the ground. Fuck you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Second time like, I said fuck you. He's like, every bike feels good because mine feels so shitty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I no. like. I was just gonna say, like PSI makes it <laughs> makes a biggest difference. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you know, so, one of the biggest difference. Yeah. So is, what what does bottom bracket height like affect responsiveness? Like, yeah. Yeah, like on rotations and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah. Even it changes the angle of. Um, it's. I mean, it seems like it changes everything. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's like your position within yeah. the two wheels yeah. for sure. But like, I All just I don't. Know, I don't necessarily understand it like that. Like I, I, I don't. You know, know like oh, I can't kids. Ride kids should five. ride their friends' bikes because that's what I always did growing up. Ride all your friends' bikes when you're just chilling, and yeah. you can kind of get a like. That's how you understand. Well, if, look at that. I rode Matthias' exactly. bike, and I was like, dude, this is how I I like a bike. To I love that when people jump on each other's yeah. bikes, and you're yeah. like, whoa, this is really nice for manuals, or wow, this bike sucks. Oh, like, dude, I've I've put a top load stem stem on because of riding somebody else's bike i've raised my bars because of riding somebody else's bike like i've done a lot of things yeah. based on the way other people's totally. bikes feel and it's cool and know? a lot of people too even down to shorting shortening your cranks like that's the trend right now too but kids forget that 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 throws a lot of things Dude, off that as well changes your whole bike it changes your 360s it changes everything but it makes it so four pegs feel good but it's like you gotta yeah. remember like what size do you ride 175s okay but i'm six two you know yeah, so i yeah. could see like 170s 165s but when i tried shorter cranks i gave them a a good effort and i was just like dude it just doesn't feel right for so yeah. much stuff i went down to 170 like a year or two you're ago. on 175s what i was on 175s and i went, went down, down to 170s and i'm still on those Colin's yeah. on like 160s or something yeah Colin's Garrett right too yeah. garrett's yeah. on really short ones yeah. too yeah but hey dude, fucking yeah. clearly works yeah, for them yeah, clear, clearly <laughs> works just fine <laughs> those dudes are masters you know they know what feels right for what they want to do yeah they, they're not stupid they're not like just guessing what's trending their bike's not ghetto no so Garrett's said, bike said, used to be. Your yeah. bike is a little ghetto. <laughs> Get, <laughs> back, back to I'm taking it personal. <laughs> hey, no. hey, Garrett's no, bike. My, you, Garrett's bike used to be the ghetto. he'd yeah. he'd be at due tour getting podium and then three sixteen like eighteen stairs afterwards and the. Bars would be yeah, big. It was like, yeah. dude, how are we? I'd get on his bike and it was so, so <laughs> beat. And he just beat because he just my in bike, high school my, on trip for after the, trip. For everybody, my bike is patinaed. Patinaed. It's your ghetto. Bike looks good, dude. Yeah, my bike is purposely. Nah, your bike might my be bike good. is purposely patinaed. What does that mean? Patina's like got like a nice like it's <laughs> it's what cart like a old like hot rod looks like. It's like when it's oh, like okay. starts like kind of rusting but in a cool way. Yeah. Ghetto. Not in like a <laughs> I have a I hole literally, in my bike way. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> literally I go to the skate park and be and like little kids like like last week a little kid was like, That's like a really old bike. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a year and a half old. Cool. Uh, I'm just yeah. giving you shit. Know, Don't take it personally. Your bike's dead. That little kid was Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> Budger leaves his bike under the ob pier <laughs> he locks Barnacles it up down there all over it. <laughs> yeah right he likes leaving it down sick. there <laughs> that'd be sick you know actually fuck we're going on, on got the, the new barnacle you, colorway uh, the du- you know you know the spot you know the spot uh uh it's always sunny Shipping in philadelphia barnacles I, you know the show super and, the, familiar and then there's the that show but i know about that it. the ledge and then the, the like the the bar or whatever like patty's pub in the show there's a spot right in front of it and it's in la it's not oh, in philadelphia yeah, the, the yeah. metal the metal ledge yeah yeah yeah, yeah the big like yeah metal ledge. Big we were riding that one time and that dude i think his name is matt and he always used to be in orange county and he had like the crazy ramp set up uh that martinez i shot a photo of martinez god we're going off the deep and i'm gonna have to edit this out it's okay but that dude literally purposely he was a patina expert and he he would patina hmm. like uh, fences and like, oh, that's tables tight. and stuff like that and make them look old like they were recovered from like the bottom of the ocean yeah. and like metal and stuff like that you see and a lot of that that's... and he did that to his bike as well uh-huh. and his bike literally looked like it almost had like barnacles like it like had like turquoise <laughs> elements wow. and stuff like to it and it just looked insane uh, that's called um verdigi- verdigi- verdigitous <laughs> i'm not even kidding that's called verdigitous <laughs> 
Ver- Thank you, Dakota, Digitus for the new, the new record for the biggest word on the podcast. If, if patina <laughs> but starts, do wishes. I can't if remember. patina starts like having like patina. green, green hues yeah. and like orange and stuff, that's yeah. like verdigit. Vergidious. Vergi- Vergi- I don't think he's said it yet. <laughs> I've tried to say it for like 30 minutes. Vergidious. Vergidious. Uh, Maybe. There we go. Yeah. I said it. Nice. Okay. Well, a great, great segue. The, and, we, I, and, and I was actually a horrible segue because I should have kept talking about X Just games. cut all this, dude. Yeah. Should have kept talking about X The weed brownies are the, kicking in. Weed. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I spiked you guys. <laughs> the, uh, uh, you you got me off the rails with that one. <laughs> weed brownies. What brownies did I? <laughs> Dude, I put yeah. it in your weed cojita cheese. Oh, uh, okay. Rice. Put, yeah. All right, all right. Hey, you think yeah. that that conversation was dumb? But people probably listening in like, what? I mean, it is dumb. Yeah. But that's I'm listening. Uh, Patina in that anything. word that. Vergidious. No <laughs> there it goes. First yeah. try. Um, you are the host for Real BMX this year. I was. Yeah. I am. You M's. I am. Because I am. So you've been in it, you've judged it, and now you are hosting it. That's yeah. what Stu was saying. It That's was crazy funny when he hit me up. He's like, "Yeah, it's gonna be funny." You done it were all. In it, you judged it, uh, and you're hosting it. You yeah. haven't filmed it yet. No, I did film it. We filmed it. Yeah. No, no. I'm saying the only thing you haven't done is being a filmer. Oh yeah, you should. Be <laughs> <on one. laughs> you should. You actually one. could. You could. I would love to film yeah. one. To be honest, if if that someone would... asked me to be their filmer, I'd be down. That, that would be, be sick. So sick. Yeah, that'd be fun. Dennis, if you get invited, you should. But I still want to do another part. <laughs> still That's want to a ride thing. It again. You got to, yeah. That, yeah. You're not I ready still for want that. to ride it again. Do that. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> film it. No, in, film no, it no, 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 no. Uh, Jonah. Well, Jonah Lidberg. Jonah Lidberg. Uh, Self Strand. Did you guys see that one? What? Eric L. Strand self film that? No. Is? Oh, my God. Self Strand? Yeah. Okay. It's good. Oh, you guys, yeah, you guys. Are I, bro, I've been slacking dude, the last couple weeks. I need to catch up on Literally, it's like. I bet it's good. Everything he does is sick. L. Strand. Killed it, like on the bike, of course, like in- incredible. And then just like he filmed it all himself, and it's like, what the fuck? Like it's just perfect. It's Dude, insane. You know what's crazy about Elstrand is like you look at him and you see like the things that he does, and it might be like some of the like more like unique things, but then you forget he could do like the gnarliest stuff too yeah. so yeah. well like and then like what or like do like a wall ride 180 table and like buzz mm-hmm. his face off like yeah. literally like so well round it's crazy it's insane and it's obviously insane. you've seen his real bmx part as well yes, because he's part of that as well i think so. that's his best part yeah it, i haven't it seen is, the new it self-strand but best yeah. part it's yeah. so good it's so good <laughs> It's so good. The, so, part, the parts are insane this year like i literally i watched yeah, all, i can't I wait for people to see those and it's like i who who got first and who got last? Exactly. You can tell me. You can tell me so any order. I I, this yeah. would be the worst one ever. Oh, to dude, judge. I would. I'd be like, Stu, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. yeah, because this one normally there is like it's kind of easy, somewhat easy to categorize. Like, this is the top end. This is the the back end. This yeah. one's like, they're all top end. Dude, like any, it end. just took. It just takes the right different. Like if there were three different judges, it would be different. A different. And that's placing. what I was telling Stu. I was like, I'm so glad that like, I don't know people that aren't really that don't know a lot about BMX this is what they're seeing and every year they get better yeah. the parts get better the filming gets better and so they it's brought like, back all the the dudes who have like won yeah. this one like but it's like it's cool because BMX is shown in a really cool light to people that normally wouldn't see it in that light you know like having the show like the real BMX show it's like dude like yeah we're we're showing them that there's more to it than like you know, some of the more like contest side of like, you know, like flips and spins and all that. It's like, this is another side of BMX that's special. Yeah. Like a little bit of humor, a little bit of culture, yeah. a little bit of, you know, <clears throat> obviously amazing bike riding. Showing um, the, the average people what we really do. Yes. Yeah. They see BMX street and they're like, oh, so these guys just ride little plazas? <laughs> like, no, actually <laughs> they're like, especially. Yeah. they're actually yeah. out there finding their spots, yeah. doing the best thing they can. And it's crazy because it's a minute and a half and you have like four or five months to film it dude i think they have six now six when you and i so had parts we had like three months something like that dude like three months I like three months like yeah it was like yeah your parts got but be now with six months it's like dude you drive yourself crazy if yeah. you stay healthy throughout the whole thing because you're gonna be like just one up in yourself yeah. until you're like well I think I'm, I'm glad we did it and got it done yeah. Yeah, <laughs> i think i'd lose my mind if i had six months for i'd probably just get hurt and like, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> make it easy on myself since dennis brought it up the original idea this year was that it was going to be kind of return of the champions and jordan hango said no i heard what, that what is what's your take on that like because he won last year Bro. and they're like they're like all right we re- welcome back and he's like nope i did it like y- you know what 
that dude is so he's like the coolest most mysterious bmxer yeah. that's ever lived to me so i'm like i kind of back that he did that for that reason yeah. like i've never even met the dude i've never seen him in person like and that's like I've met a lot of he people. He was at Nora Cup real quick on the stage. Yeah, I, I was wasn't like, there. Oh, okay. I yeah. was I think that was like the only time I seen yeah. him. Yeah. Um That's but, the most I've ever heard him talk. <sighs> dude, like, and that's what's kind of he's got that element about him. He's just like this like one of the best bike riders ever, one of the gnarliest BMX riders ever. Super quiet. You don't really hear much about him, but then he just like lays down these hammers and he's like, Yeah, I already did that. I'm good, you yeah. know? Like so it's like, you know, props to him for doing that. I couldn't, I couldn't say no if I got that opportunity. Yeah, again, that's crazy. Like, yeah. Different, different. It's cool. I think he just works a normal job. And that's he what I'm saying. His, yeah. Like all of us, his he's passion so is passionate riding, about it. You but know? he's got like, you know, I, I think um, he probably gets paid decent from his job. I don't know what he does, but it's enough to be like, I got my job. I don't need yeah. to make a, yeah. Yeah. I don't need this money. Like. Yeah, or I'm I sure. Think, it, I, mean, I just think it's I don't one know. Of those, I don't know. It's one of those things like leave it on the top. You know, like like burnout versus fade away type thing. Like yeah, yeah if I want, if I went in there one time and I fucking want it, like why am I going to go in there? Again? You think that's like, the reason, or maybe I don't know. it could just be no. like fuck it, dude. I'm good. Don't, like, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm making my own assumptions on how I think I it's could very, approach it. You but, know who he reminds me of sometimes is mm. like Kurt Rasmussen, mm. where that he, like, dude was so sick too. Came out like had like one of the sickest video parts yeah. ever was like up for a Nora cup. And then like, you know, obviously other things in life came along for him and he took different paths. He wasn't yeah. a pro bike rider anymore, but like he, he didn't have to fade away or anything like that. I was just like, dude, this is, I'm going to shred it real quick. And yeah. um, yeah, shout out to that dude. Yeah. He was like one of my best. He's friends. another legendary one where yeah. it's just like, you yeah. don't he's kind of mystic as well to a lot he's of people. Super mystic. That's what I'm saying. People. That's yeah. why I feel yeah. like I can compare the yeah. two, you know? Cool. What, uh, so what was it like hosting? Was it, was it weird? Was it, were you nervous? Was it like, I was, I was nervous. Um, the first day, so it was two days. Um, the first day was like basically just like the, um, the segues between parts and commercial breaks and the intro. And I was fine with that. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's all scripted. You just kind of, you see, you see what they want you to say. And then you go, you go in with your own words, you know? So That wasn't too bad for me. Presenting the award, yeah. surprising the person yeah. with that award, I was terrified because you only have one take to do that yeah. right and say the right things and like not stutter. And like when I get nervous, I end up stuttering a lot. Like that's just like my thing. Like I, I think about what I'm saying too much and then I like lose it. Yeah. But um, but no, I I did it and it was really cool. It was really exciting to be a part of it and like. It was so random because Stu hit me up like a week before or maybe even less than that. Like, hey, are you down to host? I was like, yeah, I'm down. That'd be cool. cool. If we're just coming back in, we had to remove that part of the podcast because cool. uh, we I felt like somebody we could gave, draw. We gave a little bit too much yeah, away. Yeah, some conclusions could have been drawn. So, A um, couple dots connected. Yes. What uh, Does Dennis have any questions while I look through my massive list? You and your list. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. I got, a, I got a little list. Uh, this is random, but Rickani is an, another dude who's had like two careers basically at this point. He was this little kid, and I've always loved Sean. He's so cool. But he had like a whole different list of sponsors. He was living on the East Coast, and he kind of, I mean, hopefully we have him on the podcast and we can talk to him about everything that's happened in his life. But he had a second coming as well with all new sponsors. Colt picked him up is in vans and you kind of seem to like have taken him under your wing a little bit. And he's always been a kid who needed the right influences. I think, you know, like he's dope and he, he has all the talent, but it just took hanging with the right people. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of seemed like exactly what happened with him, with his talent. And did that naturally happen? Or did you like see like, all right, you're going to be on Cole. I'm going to take, you're going to learn how to do this shit. Right. Not just fucking disappear again. (laughs) How did that actually go down? It was super, super natural actually. Like, cause, um, I had like hung out with him a few times prior to him getting on Colt and everything like over the years, like seeing him at like Trey Jones's house and like, I think we were at the bakery contest in Chicago together and whatever, like, and like, you know, I saw him as like, I'm like, Oh, this is like a kind of like more on the cocky side, little shit. Like, you know what I mean? But I always liked him for it. You know what I mean? He's just like like, a little East coast shit talker. He didn't mean harm. Exactly. I never was like, dude, this kid sucks because it's like, no, I'm like, dude, this this kid's really funny, really enjoyable (laughs) to hang out with, super (laughs) entertaining. But then like he was getting on Colt and like, I think 
you know, him moving to California, like, and him getting on the team and like made us hang out more, you know what I Uh mean? And then like, we started hanging out outside of riding and like whatever bullshitting together. And like, you know, uh, I think in a, in a, uh, in a podcast on the come up, even before this, I'm sorry, I'm going to backtrack a little bit before like him and I started getting close as friends. Like he had said, like, he respects like my work ethic and what I do in BMX and everything. And like says like in so many words, like he was looking up to my approach to BMX. So Robbie had actually pointed that out to me. Robbie was like, dude, he really respects you and blah, blah, blah. And like, it means a lot. You know what I mean? For someone like that, like someone who's just an absolute shredder and someone I enjoy hanging out with to like say kind things about me when we're not even that close. Like it made it. So it was like, you know, I wanted to get to know him more and like, whatever, if, if I was someone who could be a good influence on him in BMX, like I wanted to be there for him, you know, mm-hmm. and like a friendship grew out of that as and well. It seems like a really good little team because he's that young blood and I'm sure he pushes you, but he, you, your work ethic rubs off on him a little bit. Dude, as that's, well. that's actually like, yeah, a good point. He's like one of the most naturally talented. We say BMXers. that a lot about people being some of the best, but Sean really, he's so really naturally is talented. one of yeah. the best ever. Yeah. Sometimes he needs a little help with the, with the, uh, I don't know, just connect, like pushing himself a little bit. Cause like we all know how good he is. And it's like, dude, just do that. You could do it. And I feel like he can just get in his truck and go on a road trip for three months, but he has you now to be like, Dude, get back here. Let's keep filming. Yeah, hopefully you know? he listens to me, man. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got it's, it's to be frustrating in a sense too, where you see all that potential and then like oh, he just dude. doesn't necessarily him, have the work ethic at the at the moment. You know. I tell so him, like, I'm like, dude, if I was like an eighth as talented <laughs> as you are, yeah, I would. You are. I would be. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just like I feel like you know he's so naturally talented and like for me it's like yeah like I I think my. Uh, my work ethic and my passion over like they are they go together very well your work ethic and your passion go together and you use them together like they're stronger than like my actual abilities like i love this but like i feel like you know natural talent i don't feel like i'm like the most naturally talented person i have to work really hard at this stuff but i'm okay with it because because of passion and because of hard work that's I'm I'm kind of glad you brought that up because I, that's why I think a lot of people think of you as like a rider's rider. You know, like like you're one of the guys that like when like when you won Nora Cup, it was like it was like this moment of everybody was in support of you and and all that stuff, and it was like you know like and I think <laughs> you know like like they Jeff, crowd surfed me. Oh bro. yeah, that was <laughs> high, dude. The photo. Yeah, oh yeah. man, I'll never ever forget that. That's yeah. so good. Hell so yes. like that sort of thing, like you being a rider's rider and putting in the work and and you know doing everything on the back end that 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 produces the video parts and everything, and you can kind of as you said, like you tell that story and and you, everybody can see the work that you put in, and it's like it's like everybody always wants to root for the guy that that puts in the effort not the guy that just it comes easy to you know and i think that's that's what makes you so enjoyable for a lot of people is that like they can because it's because it's uh palpable like you can you can feel it you can see Thank it you, you know Thank like, you. Kind of, like <clears throat> kind of like kaczynski as well like kaczynski yeah. is like same type and he said the same thing he's like dude i don't i suck at bike riding but like i that's work, not true i know i'm paraphrasing yeah, yeah. Him, but like he I says he that. Said yeah, that he, yeah, he yeah. says he said yeah i wasn't i was super good at hockey but I, I sucked at bike riding and that's why I wanted to do it so yeah. bad. And that's yeah. why I like put in so much work and effort. And I yeah. think that's, that's like admirable in mm-hmm. so many different ways for people. And for sure. Like, for sure. So, um, it's, but I also think like, you know, for me. Produces a like, different type of bike rider too. Yeah. yeah. And I like, I'm so, I'm so obsessed with like finding spots and like everything that like, you know, kind of comes with like being passionate about BMX to where it's like, I don't know, like it's so much more to, than just riding to me. You know what I mean? It's the search, it's the hunt, it's mm-hmm. the kill, it's all of those things for me. And like some people, it's not like that for them. It's just the riding part. And for me, it's like a way bigger picture and I can't force somebody to feel those other things, Yeah, you know? But I think, yeah, I think you do such a good job of like conveying that message, you Thank know, you. like, Thank you. like, yeah, like for the search for vans and, and Bay Rome and, and, and all and native land, like they all have like such a, 
uh, I don't know what the right word is. Like, I want to say culture, but I don't know if it, it you know, it, like, like a production. In, yeah. And it like invokes feelings and, and, and like you. a sense of pride with, with, with the production, you know, like, and, 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 it, and it all has direction, you know, like, I that feel like it's like lot. in the sense, like you said, I, it's funny because you said you had the, the name native land after you did the video, but before you did Bay Rome, you had the video, you had the name before mm -hmm. and it's like, and that sort of stuff. And, and just like, I feel like you always have the name, you have everything else planned, planned out. And then it's like the bike riding goes in and fits, right, you know, right. so. No, and that, and that's the thing. I think, um, you know, I'm looking at a bigger picture a lot of the times. It's like, obviously the tricks need to be good and I have tricks that I want to get and I have like things that I want to ride and everything. But like, dude, a video part is like a package deal. Yeah. If anything's, I've talked about it. We've all talked about it on like, you know, when it comes to like the, real BMX parts or anything. It's like, it is well known that if your filmer's off or the music's off or whatever, it could ruin your whole part. So yeah. it's like, or if the spots aren't right or you're not using the spots right, there's so many things that could make a part not as special as it should be, you know? Yeah. So I think like, I'm like a nerd when it comes to that stuff. I'm like super like dissecty, like, well, like, you know, if this, if this part of the song has a little bit more heart and soul in it, it's going to like, it's going to address this trick. I just got a little bit more. I, I don't know. Dude. That's, that's what made, I feel you like kinda, that. you like even know, like we're like the wall, right? A tire slide is going to yeah, go. Yeah. I need this, I need this kind <laughs> of clip. Like you're, yes. it's sick. But yeah. like, that's, a, that's a sort of effort that I feel like the, a, people watching it, they don't, they can't quantify it. They don't know why, but then, but it but makes that, sense to you when you watch it. But they feel like it afterwards. Silly, you know, yeah. like I, I feel that way. Dude, least, those so. are like the coolest things anyone could say to me. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not even kidding. Like that's, what, <laughs> that's like what I, you know, it's not like I'm like, trying to be that way but i'm glad that i come across that yeah, way yeah. like it's just like that's just my passion you know yeah, yeah. During, awesome. during a time where this coronavirus thing happened and people like ourselves aren't traveling anymore and they think it's time for dak to take a little break you are putting out native lands for you're hosting real bmx and you're dropping a van slip on oh yeah 10 years well so we talked i was i was you just ain't slowing like, down i was like we <laughs> talked about Monster for almost ten years, but it's been in vans for ten years. Ten yeah. years, yep. yeah, yeah, That's... yeah. As of as of June, yeah, two thousand twenty. Congrats yes. on that, too. thank yeah. you, dude. I'm so stoked. I, uh, I mean, the last ten years, like being a part of like Colt and Vans, like they have solidified what I want to represent in BMX so much. You know what I mean? It's like I know. Put it this way: with those brands they're going to have to kick me off. I'm not quitting. <laughs> like I don't care who comes along, dude. If, if, uh, I don't know, Rolls Royce or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, like really, it's just like, I, I'm so thankful for those brands and I'm, I'm, I have so much, you know, love for them. And, uh, yeah, the Vans thing was super cool because, you know, I made that post on Instagram and like, so many people that are high up at Vans, like reached out to me, emailed me, called me. And it was like, it was funny because when I posted it, it was like, I had felt like I, I was like, this is really cool. Like I want to, I want to tell people how thankful I am for being a part of this. And yeah. then it turned into like this whole, like them, like thanking me and whatever. And I'm like, it just feels so mutual. You know what I yeah. mean? And I'm, I just like, couldn't, can't ask for more for, for a, a relationship with a shoe sponsor, you know? Yeah. That's so. Sick. Um, and we got Dennis now, dude. We're freaking hyped, bro. I'm so thankful. I was going to say, you are like Vans to me. Like you and Gary for the U.S. side of things have like, you guys have repped them so hard and it's cool to be a part of it. I've only been on Vans for like a year and a half and it's been like one of the best years of my life. We've been we've been needing you this whole time. Bro. I don't know about needing me, but <laughs> yeah. man, man, it's been fun. I've been loving it. So as as Dennis mentioned, you have a slip-on coming yeah. out. When it, When is that? Um, that will be spring 2021. So okay. like first BMX slip on. Yeah. The is first, it, yeah. Is it the, it's the BMX. It's got the BMX soul. Dude, on it. that's sick. I'm so stoked. Yeah. I'm um, a slip on guy. So if I, I ride in slip ons pretty much all, unless I'm like planning on like actually riding super, super, if I'm going to Dennis's house, I'm putting some real shoes. Dude, it's on, crazy though, slip, because like I, I always the slip felt on the, pros are, are legit. I always yeah. felt Fuck, the same yeah. way. Yeah. Like when I dude, the first probably six or seven years I rode for vans, I never wore slip-ons. I like the way they look, but I'm like, those things aren't going to like do what they need to do. No. Dude, I will do anything that I do in a pair of skate highs in slip-ons yeah. because they're like just as supportive, you know, even though there's not as much material granted, like 
if your peg hits you in the top of the foot or something, it's going to hurt more. The top but like, of the foot's the only thing that sucks, but yeah. the, the, the cushion around the outsides and the sole is like Dude, seriously the best. It yeah. lasts forever too. Yeah. And, uh, I've been, um, actually wear testing the samples for, for the slip on pro BMX. And, uh, Are you I'm kind s- of beefing them up like the material or what? Dude, I mean, I don't know what you can say and not say, but, um, the material's great. The sole works perfect on that silhouette. Like, cause that's what they were worried about. Um, the, the BMX sole is a little bit higher mm-hmm. than the skate sole. So they're like the slip on's kind of low. It might not fit. Dude, it's perfect. It works so well. Nice. I think they might have raised the upper a little bit. So it's like not to to compensate for how high the, the sole is. Um, but dude, they're like they're working so perfect. I love them. Nice. <laughs> I wish I could show you guys. Like I wish I could be like, yeah. yo, these are them, they're tight. They're oh, coming yeah. soon. Everyone's yeah. going to see them. Yeah, yeah. And so. then you've, I, I don't know if you have any current projects with them, but you've done some graphics over the years and stuff like that. So I assume you're designing the graphics for the shoes as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, super stoked. So I did the graphics for the shoe. Um, we got two shirts coming out oh, with it, yeah. a hat. So like the full round of like clothing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. And it's it's cool. Like I've always drawn like ever since I was like a little kid, like that was another thing that kind of helped me get out of like anxiety spikes, like something to focus on, something to put like some heart and soul into to get like whatever demons you're fighting out. And, um, I started picking it up again a lot when I was traveling because it's like you're sitting on the plane for so long, like you got to do something. And then I got an iPad with the the pencil yeah, yeah. and I started like really being able to like elevate that, like creative side so like i started drawing more stuff for vans and they've like bought some graphics off me and they like super it's so weird because like i don't know like you never feel like i never feel like i'm that good at it i i love it but i don't feel like i'm that good at it you know it's just like surfing it's the same thing absolutely love it don't feel like i'm good at it but um with drawing it's like they see some i guess they see like a style that maybe they latch on to and they think looks cool. So then they ask me to do things and it's like still crazy to me, but I'm super, yeah. It What's, makes sense though. It's your own original artwork. Yeah. And it's something they can grab onto that nobody else in their department can, can replicate because it's from your mind. And even if you don't, they have these graphic guys that are professionals with the art and all that, but yeah. you just come to them with this cool little piece and they're like, that's original and it's you. Let's do well, it. Did, think you, about did it. you do Larry's as well? I didn't do Larry's. Oh, okay. No, right. no, but think about it. It's really cool. Cause Vance has always done that with their athletes. They like, they involve other things that they do in their campaigns and stuff. It's you so know what sick. I mean? Yeah. Everybody knows your back, the BMX street rider, but yeah. Vance is going to want you to like add some of your own flavor outside of what everybody knows. Right. About you. Right. And then, um, I don't know, even like the project with you and the backyard ramps. It's like it's like shining light on other things. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, no, like, yeah, Dennis is this, but he also has this in his backyard and he shreds it and whatever. It's just like it's cool to um I don't know, show other sides of things mm-hmm. and like Vans does a great job of that with their athletes. So. They do. Even the Super even stoked. the Matias thing that I don't think they put it on their YouTube, but everyone saw it. It was on Matias's YouTube and his for his shoe, yeah, they sent to oh, Rich, so sick. They sent Rich to New York for the whole week just to make like a minute long piece, and Dude, it, was it was so, so cool. good. And it showed him the like the cab driver and everything, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and him like dressed up in like his modeling clothes, yeah. like they, yeah, it's just like yeah, do whatever Matthias wants and show his show a little bit of riding, but show his New York life too, yeah, yeah. And that's because that's like, the thing. It's like we have other stories to tell other than bike riding, you know. So and it's cool to include those, and that's what's cool. Band is like an actual action sports brand, so they're not like a Nike or an Adidas. Like, tell us your action sports story. You know, they're like, we already mm-hmm. all of our stories from the we started as this. What else you guys got? Mm-hmm. Like, there's mm-hmm. so much more personality involved than just your sport. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Rad. It's cool. Congrats on the new shoe. Yeah. I'm excited to I'm wear looking, it. Slip on with the BMX sole. That. That's gonna be good. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Spring twenty one. Yeah, boy. Um, anything else going on? Uh, well, um, na- native land. Anything with cinema? Is there anything else in the world? Dude, works? it sucked. We were about to go on a cinema trip. Like, oh, yeah. literally, we had it planned for like I want to say like the very end of May, mm-hmm. and then we had stuff booked and everything yeah. prior to COVID stuff information, and then that trip got canceled. So many freaking trips got canceled. It's like. And granted, yeah. we're all in it together, so it's like, you know, it's not woe is me, but it's like I look at, like, what my travel schedule was supposed to be like. It was insane. Yeah. Sometimes I'm, like, a little bit thankful because, like, you it know, really like, is. It, wears, I, it wears you out, dude. Yeah. I, it's crazy, like, I've never been home this much 
ever ever in my ever. entire life yeah Dude. so it's 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 cool it's it's gonna be weird to go back to it i mean yeah. I, I have the kid now too so that's gonna be super hard but like yeah it's gonna be a little bit weird i don't know yeah i um, agree what uh what's it like riding with those dudes I the feel like, cinema dudes? yeah i feel like it's like i mean i arguably that's like the best team in bmx it's like the everybody's best rider on one team <laughs> you know like Dude, it's it's like the it's so all-star team. rad getting to ride with all those dudes and travel with them. It's like that is like those trips feel so old school. Like we're all like cracking up the whole time. Will Stroud's driving the van, like just vibing with us. Like it's yeah. not like it like Will being there doesn't feel like, oh, the TM's here, gotta chill out. Like Will's like, no, like, dude, like, you know, we've been riding, let's go get a beer or whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, but like because it feels so natural, so much good stuff gets done. And so many people, like we're all vibing together and just having a good time. Those trips are a freaking blast. I feel, dude. I feel like you guys are all such motivators in your own right. So when you guys all get together, it's like, it's oh, gotta yeah. be like, like, it, you know, like I feel like when I've been around, when I've been on a trip with Garrett, he's like, it's like five or six hours of riding. And then he's like, okay, we'll get the generator out. You know, like, mm-hmm. it's like, fuck. All right. Yeah. We're going. Yeah. Like, no. And that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's so motivating being around those dudes and seeing everybody's like hustle and how they do it. Cause everybody has a different program. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like, they all work well together and then you feed off one another. So, uh, yeah, some nice. of the trips are tight. What, uh, what else have you been doing to occupy the time? I saw some woodworking stuff. What else is going on? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of woodworking. I built a bunch of kickers for Colt to sell yeah, on the that web was cool. store. That's yeah, dope. it was super fun. Yeah. How many did you make? I made 15 for Colt and I made like six or seven others for like neighborhood kids and nice. stuff. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Like, That's cool. Just like, just for the kids around. Yeah. My, and then, uh, my buddy Cody does like, uh, skate lessons for kids and, um, he was having to do FaceTime ones for a while during the COVID stuff. So it's oh, crazy. So like he actually like got me hooked up with some of the parents to like make some kickers and drop them off at their house. So like the kid had something to skate while they were doing these FaceTime skate lessons on COVID or for during COVID. Yeah, so that's crazy. So yeah, was, I've been doing that and like just a bunch of spot searching really. Yeah. Um, camping too. Camping's been tight. You know, it's like, can't be around a lot of people. So that's me great. and the wife yeah. are just like going to mammoth and so wherever else. And yeah, that's the cool thing about our lives. Like you can still ride bikes like by yourself or with a small group of people and have just as much fun. And if you like camping, it's all good. That's what I mean. It's like, you know, there was never, thankfully for California, there's never really like a restriction on whether you could ride bikes or not. But like <clears throat> for the first bit, I was like pretty, I was trying to be very mindful of it. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get my parents sick or whatever. So like me and Vish started filming like maybe a month into like the lockdown thing. And even then we were driving in separate cars to oh, spots. Wow, yeah. yeah. We were like trying to like, I, I, was, really, doing, yeah. I was doing yeah. that too. Yeah. Like, and it was I scary. Like, yeah, fuck, I wasn't, still scary. we weren't like fist bumping after yeah. tricks, but like, dude, still working, <laughs> still bro, doing you. We got to get a lot of stuff done oh my because God. all these buildings were closed. We just like went, we just had field days, dude. Is this all yeah. going to be in the new native yeah. lands? Yeah. 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 That was like the dude. If you, realistically, if, if you didn't lock yourself down, it was the best time to be a fucking bike rider. Best. It was like, the best. Dude. Dude. It like, I, this part would not be what it is without the lockdown. <laughs> going to have character. It's going to be a part you'll remember for the rest of your life because it, dude, I filmed some of that during like a pandemic when everything was a ghost town. Yes, <laughs> everything was a ghost town in like getting things like, at spots that I'd never ever be able to ride yeah. any other. You could like time. film an urban motorcycle part during that they whole thing. I'm sure people, I'm sure people did. did. Yeah. Justin Mulford probably was out there just bah. Yeah, did you, you could literally do whatever you like want. The, that whole society of like the gumball gumball racers where they like drive across the country and there's like a record from like a certain from like LA to New York. No. And, they, and the record's been I've beat like six times because during, of no because traffic of and yeah, no they, And it's like they all say like basically that society is like says like, oh, it doesn't count. Because it's oh, like too, because it, it can't be yeah, beaten in the future yeah. because there's nobody, there was nobody on the road. So right, it's like, hey, right. it, you, did it, you did it, but it doesn't count. Dude, no traffic was tight. Yeah, right? There's still no traffic down here. It's still pretty. I hit tra- hey, you know what? Tra- SD is, <laughs> yeah. cool. we know SD's better. No, okay. but we got bad traffic normally. Like yeah, yesterday, yeah. I was driving 530 through downtown. I was like, oh my God, yeah. it's still not going off yet. Yeah. But I was just trying to be mindful. Like, even like with social media and stuff, I didn't want to be like flaunting, like being oh, out yeah, riding yeah. because it's like, 
Dude, people were in really shitty situations oh, yeah. during yeah. that. Yeah. Spain, Italy, like it's crazy. It's crazy to think, like, because yeah. some, sometimes you get locked into it. And I know you were affected in other ways, but like you get locked into it and you kind of forget that it's like it is real for a lot of people. You know, for sure. And it's like so for sure. It's it's fucking it's gnarly. Yeah. So. You know, like people say, I like this or whatever, and it is good because everyone's finding positives. But fuck, man, like it is real and it, there is a sad side of it too For you know sure. you got people always have to remember both that there's so much positives and amazing gains you can pick up from it but don't forget that a husband and a wife could have covid and be in separate rooms right now yeah. you know and not even get yeah. to this yeah. fucking crazy yeah. sad shit going on i was gonna make a joke until you said that no. yeah <laughs> no no more and, and it was funny we weren't even gonna talk about covid <laughs> I, it's, I mean, it's impossible it's not, right we're now. not talking yeah we're not going too far yeah, in, but yeah. just like, it's part of life it's, it is it's part, part of life, part I mean, of life. yeah it, it allowed yeah. him to feel you know totally it allowed him to film native land so um we're trying just not to talk about it the whole time yes exactly <laughs> uh what i don't know if i have much left my uh my list is is pretty well handled. I love you? talking to you, Dak. That was awesome. He drove all the way down here just to hang out and talk with us. Anytime, dude. Are you kidding me? I wanted dude, to do should... it when you were doing it I know. a while ago. Well, you, you hit me up that one time when Lacey was in town. And we were going to try and get something going. but obviously... Well, now, thanks to Fudger and RBMX, we're doing it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stoked. Stoked you guys are doing it. Yeah, I love thank it. You. Hell thank yeah. You. And we love everything you're doing and yeah. the whole BMX community. Like, we can talk Dak up. I know, oh, I know. I already, yeah, you already know. He's just gonna get you know, blush and say thanks, but everybody a, already knows. I got a man knows. crush on him, so Aww. I don't see him enough, though. So the world already knows. Thank you, Dak, for coming. Thank thanks you. to all the listeners. Everyone, stay safe out there and shred with your friends. Much love. Thanks, Unclick. everybody. Thanks. You. <laughs> cool. Thank you, sir.